Mr. Gyandath, most welcome. Dr. Meena Pandey, Dr. Meena Pandey, most welcome. KKA. Uh, now recording is on. It's over to you, Dr. Atul Priti, please. Yes, sir. और ऐश्वर कोई भी अपना वीडियो ऑन करे आप उसको रिमूव कर दे तुरंत ध्यान रखिए इस बात का हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर अतुल प्रेति ऑर्गेनाइजिंग सेक्रेटरी ऑफ दिस ई कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एंटायर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी एंड एसआरबीएस आई वेलकम यू ऑल दिस इज आवर फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ इंटरनेशनल ई कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन रीसेंट ट्रेंड्स इन लाइफ साइंस रिसर्च चैलेंजेस एंड प्रोग्रेसेस the first session of this conference we have dr uh, akriti shivastava from yukon health center usa she is our keynote speaker dr anjana bhatia hnv jalandhar dr reena dave from mn uh, virani science college rajkot and dr akshay alavar from gd goenka university gurgaon I thank all of these eminent speakers to spare their valuable time out of their very busy schedule. Uh, first, I would request Professor A K Mishra, pattern of the conference, to share a few words with our speakers and participants. Uh, over to you, uh, Professor A K Mishra. Thank you, Dr. Ramesh Chandra Ji. It's a uh, gives us a proud privilege that uh, botany and zoology department of ss college and government pg college bajpur uttarakhand are, are jointly organizing a national e conference today and it is also facilitated by society for research and biological science they are uh, convener of the bande national e conference dr adarsh pande ji organizing secretary dr atul priti ji dr priti singh dr ramesh chandra chandra ji and dr nirupama dal koti ji it is a undoubtedly the team of such eminent teachers it gives me a proud privilege that they are organizing uh, such a wonderful national e conference today the eminent speaker and keynote speaker of today dr akriti ji and other resource person of the e conference dr anjana dr reena and dr jyoti that e conference is organizing on the re topic recent trend in life sciences research challenges and promises life sciences in a natural science that studies living organism including physical structure chemical processes molecular interaction psychological mechanism development and evolution this <clears throat> this kind of a fundamental values of life and uh, in the recent past and recent decades a, a very much uh, understand of the life sciences promises but some basic problems have recognized to be solved such as origin of life aging and pattern formation immune immunology molecular biology pharmacology virology and population dynamics and biomedical science in genetic form is uh, gaining a high reputation day by day as uh, i think uh, the life sciences is a mother of ayurved allopath homeopath and natural path too and but in the present scenario the scope of life sciences is enhancing day by day because it is a very much interdisciplinary 
subject only there are two subject in the world i think one is life sciences and other thing for the welfare of life sciences lives uh, welfare of lives include all economics सर आपका माइक म्यूट हो गया माइक अनम्यूट कर लीजिए सर सर आपका माइक म्यूट हो गया है माइक अनम्यूट कर लीजिए सर आवाज आ रही है अब आ रही है आप सर यस सर अब आ जाइए जी आ एंड लाइफ साइंसेज लाइफ साइंसेज इज वेरी मच इंटर डिसिप्लिनरी सब्जेक्ट ओनली टू फॉर्म आर देयर वन इज द लाइफ साइंसेज एंड अदर इज फॉर द बेटरमेंट ऑफ द लाइफ साइंसेज फॉर द बेटरमेंट ऑफ लाइफ साइंसेज सब्जेक्ट all commerce economics sociology and other things but in case of life sciences this is a very much inter interdisciplinary subject this uh, includes within chemistry physics statistics geography psychology and all other allied areas the present pe uh, pandemic have given a big challenge for the subject of the life sciences because the coming time the research and labs are doing for the betterment of life but they are also producing the better for the lives so that there are a good challenge in my opinion as a student of commerce the industry of life sciences is facing too much problems such as problems of patent generic co generic and patent commodities less focus on rd of the institution as well as the companies global competitions and in case of life sciences there is a gain but in a long term not in a short term in fact today is a very challenging topic the team have been selected that uh, recent trend in life sciences in research and such research are going in different labs different organizations and they are doing for the betterment of life and how the life can be more fruitful for everyone without disease without infection and a good survival of the life is required but the challenges are very much with the research of the life sciences some countries having a monopoly they are having their own patent system they are having a compulsion on the patent and there is, there are so many mal practices in competitions of the research in the life sciences but i think the promise are there researchers and scientists are doing well in case of life sciences but this required a span of time that is a clinical trial and other trial present covid 19 virus corona virus is going on but uh, the span of uh, vaccine required a span of time due to the some certain facts because without uh, clinical trial and other trials this cannot be forced to the society and uh, because it depend upon the life my i think the researchers team and uh, they are organizing a very good uh, uh, they will organize a very good sessions technical session as well as inaugural and validity session of that national e conference my uh, all the congratulations to the concerning team dr adarsh pande dr ramesh chandra nirupama dalkoti preeti singh and atul preeti and those who are connected and associated in this seminar nationally and internationally i am very much thankful i welcome on behalf of my college as well as college of the government pg college bajpur uttarakhand and also from the uh, society of research in biological science uh, i welcome once again all of you and hope that very much thoughtful highlighted lectures will be delivered and proper discussion will be held today on this uh, national e conference once again good wishes all of you and welcoming all of you थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर चरण स्पर्श आपका okay. आशीर्वाद थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू भैया डॉक्टर ओके थैंक यू सर
thank you sir for your valuable words now call upon uh, dr nirupama dalakuti report dr atul please unmute your mic oh sorry sir sorry sorry it's okay it's okay uh, thank you sir for your valuable words now i call upon dr nirupama dalakuti reporter of the session to formally introduce our keynote speaker to the participants over to you dr dalakuti thank you so much sir good good morning everyone i welcome you all in this in unmute your mic unmute your mic dr nirupama please oh okay sir okay. i welcome you all in this international e conference on recent trend in life science research challenges and promises organized by government pg college bajpur nagar uttarakhand department of botany ss college and scientific research in biological science i am pleased to introduce our eminent speaker dr kirti sivasta post doctorate fellow department of neurosciences yukon health center connecticut usa Dr Akarthi also held important position as senior research fellow during 2016-17 and junior research fellow during 2013 to 16 at CSIR IITR Lucknow Dr Sivastava has completed her PhD in biochemistry from CSIR Indian Institute of Toxicology Research Lucknow Dr Akarthi Sivastava has won many accolades in the field of research and has won many awards like Srimati Snehalata Banerjee Gold Medal for Best Research Publication at National Conference on Current Issue of Environmental Health Climate Change and Its Management Travel Award by the Asia Pacific Society for Neurochemistry Malaysia Best Poster Presentation Award at Second IBRO APRC Chandigarh Neuroscience School India Dr Akriti Sivastava has vast experience in publication and has published many research papers in various reputed national and international journals having high impact factor dr sivastava has also published 10 articles five short communications and two books chapters and has attended five national and international conferences ma'am we are very thankful to have you on this international e conference now i request dr akriti to deliver her lecture on new trends in stem cell ma'am please Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Nirupama. Um, it's my pleasure to be here on this platform today, uh, and uh, I'd be very happy if I'm able to shed some light on the current trends uh, in life sciences. So I'll start sharing my screen, and uh, it just. Uh, just skip just a bit. Just give me a minute. I'm having some trouble connecting here. Okay, don't worry. Okay. Take your time. Take your time. Yeah. So is, uh, is the is my screen? Uh, yeah, please. Is my screen uh, like visible to everybody? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, now it's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm here to deliver a talk on uh, the new trends in stem cells in life sciences. So I'm I'm sure everybody here must be aware of what stem cells are and how they have majorly impacted. uh biomedical research and clinical research in general and what are their benefits how they're being used in the uh, disease therapy and uh, what are their features so on and so forth i'll be taking them up one by one so what stem cells are so it was uh, by bovary and hacker that the term stem cell was coined which they used to define a group of cells that could give rise to uh, the entire germ line of an organism 
and these stem cells are said to be completely naive uh, they are said to be completely uneducated in the sense that you can stimulate them to to be differentiated or to to be converted into any desired cell type of the body of the human body when they are exposed to a specific stimulus from outside and they are pretty easy to generate from either adult body tissue or from the embryo uh, that's the human embryo or they can also be generated from uh, an uh, adult tissue through the process of reprogramming Now, reprogramming is a process where uh, we introduce certain genetic factors, which which are also called as the stem cell factors, into these adult tissues and convert them back into the stem cells. It's like taking a cell back to its origin. Another major important uh, factor or the property of stem cell is their capacity to self renew or self replicate. So this uh, gives them uh, the status of being a living organism, a uh, sorry, a complete living system in themselves. Now, stem cells are uh, they're broadly classified based on their ability to differentiate into various cell types of the body, which is also known as their cellular potency. So, based on their cell potency, they are either totipotent, pluripotent, or multipotent. Now, in case of totipotent stem cells, these kind of stem cells can give rise to whole organism, uh, to like all the cell types of the body, as well as the extra embryonic tissue like placenta. So the best example for a totipotent cell would be a zygote that is the beginning of life or that can give rise to a whole organism. Then comes the pluripotent stem cells. Pluripotent stem cells are those kind of stem cells which have the capacity or the ability to differentiate into all the all possible types of cells in a human body. And they basically include embryonic stem cells as well as induced pluripotent stem cells. Lastly, we come to multipotent stem cells. Multipotent stem cells can give rise to uh, like a limited number of cells. They have a restricted uh, ability to differentiate, and these usually are the adult stem cells, which are uh, the mesenchymal stem cells, neural stem cells, or even the hematopoietic cells. Now. Since their inception, uh, their stem cells has have advanced in the way they're being used, uh, the whole stem cell biology area. So since uh, their inception, they have grown, they have evolved over time. So the first, uh, the researchers first began using the two D culture of stem cells. Two D culture is the basic two dimensional culture of cells, wherein the cells grow in a single layer, like a mono layer of cells growing on a suitable surface. This kind of model of stem cells is used for understanding the basic disease mechanisms, or for for uh, various toxicity screening assays. So this is the for understanding the most basic uh, principles or basic uh, phenomenon of of like physiological uh, activity that goes on in the body. But the problem with this kind of format is that they do not truly represent the human system. Because they're quite simple, and whereas the human anatomy is very complex, so the researchers went a step ahead and uh, invented the three D culture system or the organoid system. In the three D culture, this was a more complex and self organizing kind of a structure, wherein the cells could interact with each other, and not just one type of cell, in, in like multiple types of cells could interact with each other in terms of uh, forming networks, forming connections between each other, and how they influence uh, each other's activity. So that is more depictive how the things happen inside a human body, or how the environment in uh, around a human organ system is. So whatever, uh, like the results obtained through 3D culture system, especially in case of uh, disease modeling and drug screening, was more depictive or more relatable to the human response. So they were obviously more preferred than the 2D format. But the researchers, the stem cell biologists, they didn't just stop at the 3D culture. They went a step even further to uh, come up with the concept of organoid chip. Now, what is organ on chip? Organ on chip is like a complete organ system on the size of a microchip. 
So these chips are have various channels uh, coming from different sides. Uh, the channels are lined with actual human cells, and uh, they come uh, equipped with a lot of sensors to sensors to detect the changes in pH, to detect the changes in temperature, to see the gaseous exchange that happens in uh, organ system in like actual human body, and how uh, there is like solute transport. There is a vasculature system, the circulatory system. System. So all these functions have been uh, incorporated in the organ on chip concept in just the size of a microchip. So when, uh, like here, if you see at the in the particular figure here, this is the uh, a beating heart, which is not inside a body; it's actually in a laboratory in a dish. So this is how uh, it looks. Uh, I mean, it just needs a lot of expertise to produce such kind of a model. But once it is made, it's it's really really helpful in understanding human physiology. Um, no, understanding the effects. No, no, no. Sir, very good. Sir, you said very good. Sir, very good. Sir, very good. In under. in understanding the effects uh, or the changes caused due to a disease and also when you are assessing some uh, drug response in a patient or in a human system so the response or the results that you get they more relatable to the human system uh, in like in reality how the human system or the human organ system would uh, respond so the data obtained through this system is far more reliable and that's the reason why most of the organizations that are engaged in drug development are relying heavily on this particular concept of organ on chip but since uh, we are talking about the new trends in cell biology or the clinical uh, how they have impacted the clinical scenario or the research scenario so my uh, first talk would be more on the induced pluripotent stem cells which have which are the trending uh, topic in the biomedical research area right now the induced pluripotent stem cells as i said earlier have the capacity to differentiate into any type of cell in the body and these were discovered in the year 2006 by shinya yamanaka in japan and uh, the this particular discovery actually changed the face of stem cell research um it was like after a lot of failed efforts that he was able to convert adult tissue cells back into stem cells through the introduction of uh, various stem cell factors which later on came to be known as yamanaka factors after his name and uh, just introduction of those genetic factors or those stem cell factors into the adult tissue he was able to reconvert a uh, differentiated uh, mature cell back into the stem cell so when i say iprcs or induced pluripotent stem cells i literally mean the set of cells that can be externally stimulated to form any type of cell in the body like any possible kind of cell and these are extremely extremely important for disease modeling and uh, when you are investigating like the mechanism of a disease how the how the effect various uh, uh, different pathways of the body and as well as when you are screening for various compounds or drugs or even for toxicity screening or toxicity testing studies so they come in as uh, they prove to be very very important in those areas also they can be easily derived from a healthy individual or from a patient with a minimally invasive procedure I and mean, you don't need a uh, an extensive elaborate surgery here you just need a skin biopsy to obtain the adult tissue from which you can convert this uh, convert uh, that those adult tissue into um, iprcs so uh the most transforming concept uh in the life science research was the uh concept of patient derived iprcs so with patient derived iprcs how it is done is supposedly you have a patient say suffering with any kind of disease here it's uh in this example states the patient of having huntington's disease which is a neurodegenerative disorder so what is done is you take a skin biopsy of this patient you get the skin fibroblasts and then you add the stem cell factors to convert them into iprcs now there are two ways you can proceed with these iprcs 
you either straight away convert them into your desired cell type, say uh, like neurons here, like the intermediate st stage of neurons and then into the final mature neurons. And you use these neurons for the disease modeling purpose, for the drug screening purpose or for the toxicity testing purpose. So in a way, when you have this neurons, so these neurons, since they've been derived from the patient, whatever genetic makeup uh, or genetic flaws that that patient has would be there in this particular set of neurons. So you can easily study the system. You can easily see what are the, uh, what could be the possible targets while uh, drug uh, like drug development. This is one method of using the patient-derived IPSCs. Another method is once you have the iPSCs converted from the uh, skin cells of the patient, you can uh, genetically correct them. Like you can remove the mutations that were there in the in those set of cells and correct them, and then convert them into the neurons and transplant these corrected neurons back into the patient. So there comes the therapeutic application of stem cells here. So you can, uh, so in a way like patient derived IPSCs came in very uh, handy or came, uh, proved very, very useful when you, in case of both in cellular therapy, as well as for disease modeling and drug screening purpose. So this was a very important milestone achieved by the researchers in the field of stem cell and in the field of life science research as such. Now, with the stem cells came another major concept, another interesting concept of regenerative medicine. Regenerative medicine is a type of medicine wherein the cells, or particularly here the stem cells, they can repair or replace any tissue that has been damaged in the body, like say heart tissue, brain tissue, kidney cells, liver tissue, whatever it is, whatever or wherever the damage is, you can use stem cells to repair the damage or repl replace those damaged cells. So how it is like this for, this, for example, here, you have a patient, say, possibly with a spinal cord injury. You take the skin cells from this patient, convert them into uh, iPSCs, and then differentiate those, those iPSCs into neural stem cells. And these neural stem cells are then injected back into the patient. So what the researchers observed here was after a while, they saw these cells that had been injected back into the patient, they started growing in number and they started repairing the damaged tissue. So it could either be two ways. What the conclusion came out was they could either directly replace the damaged cells or probably they secrete certain factors, certain growth factors that can repair the damage in, the, in that particular area of the body or in that particular tissue. So this is like completely patient derived cells. So there are no chances of rejection here because it's the patient's own cells that are being injected back into him or her. So the chances of rejection are minimal, if any. And it was safe. It has been found to be in pilot studies. It was found to be in some cases effective too. So the studies are still on. It's still growing. The field is still growing. And uh, we still have to see the long-term effects, how it goes. But uh, this, so far, this particular concept has been a game changer for the disease therapy studies here or for the cellular therapy in general. Now, after uh, we had regenerative medicine, we got to know the uh, regenerative capacity of the stem cells. Uh, researchers brainstormed and came up with another concept of personalized medicine. Now with personalized medicine, what I mean is when you have a patient, the, the, the treatment that is designed for that particular patient is completely specific to him or her. I mean, whatever genetic flaws are in that patient would be replicated in the uh, therapy uh, or in the uh, therapy uh, that you want to give that patient uh, give to that patient and also uh, whatever the responses you will get say for drug testing or drug screening using those pa the cells from that patient would give you the exact response that you could later that you could later on estimate or you know anticipate in that patient like how if you uh, give a certain drug to a patient how his or her body is going to respond to it so you get a clear very very clear picture of that uh, as uh, like 
input like specifically for that particular patient. So organ on shift concept, as I explained earlier, is a very, very useful tool for drug screening and for uh, drug, uh, like therapy as such. And it works through the microfluidics process. Microfluidics is like use of channels and uh, sensors and um, various, uh, you know, continuous inflow and outflow of uh, compounds and gases and solutes like it happens in our body so uh, this uh, like Viz institute and harvard here in us has developed a lot of organ chips like liver chip kidney chip lung chip and these chips if lined with the cells of a patient would give the exact response how his or her body is going to respond to a particular drug so what they are doing now is the the next thing that they have in mind in the area of personalized medicine is combining all of these different organ chips together to possibly create a human on chip so once you have a human on chip you have a system wherein all the different organ systems can actually interact with each other that's like how a human body works so then you can you probably uh, i don't know how long that will take but then you can probably uh use that system for drug screening for clinical trials so you cannot you do not uh, need to waste money on the clinical trials using animals because animals and human data although they have like genetic homology they share the genome to quite a certain extent but the results that you obtain in an animal model need not be the same in the human system also. There's no guarantee that whatever you get in an animal system, that exact response you, you're gonna get in the uh, human system as well. That's the reason why most of the uh, clinical trials fail because uh, the preclinical data suggest a strong response, positive results, but when it reaches the final clinical trials in the human subject, the results do not, I mean, I mean, there's no success there. So this is one of the major re uh, reasons, the interspecies difference between animals and humans that leads to um, the failure of clinical trials of most of the drugs. So if this concept materializes like on a large scale, maybe those data ambiguities, those interspecies difference would be done away with and whatever response, whatever data we generate in the lab, uh, that would actually be uh, more reflective of human data. So this is another uh, development in the field of stem cell biology, in the field of like possibly in the clinical aspects of stem cell biology. Now, based on that, uh, the so many uh, like so many benefits of stem cells. Uh, FDA has approved the stem cell therapy for a few diseases, and some of them are still in clinical trials. Now. Before mentioning the diseases here, one important point that I'd like to mention in stem cell therapy is the uh, requirement for FDA approval. If, say, any stem cell therapy, if any clinic promo is saying it uh, is involved in stem cell therapy, but it does not have an FDA approval, then you can never rely on that treatment because it does not guarantee any safety. It does not guarantee the efficacy of treatment. So you will spend a lot of money on the treatment, but it could, you know, backfire. You could have a lot of side effects. You could have failed uh, surgeries, uh, loss of money. So and before going for any kind of stem cell therapy, it's very important to see if that clinic uh, is has the, has the FDA approval or not. So based on the uh, various um, positive effects of stem cell therapy, a lot of blood related disorders have already been uh, treated with stem cell therapy and they also have the FDA approval, those therapies. Like most of the leukemias, uh, lymphomas, thalassemia, and storage diseases or immune disorders, they have been successfully treated with stem cell therapy and they have due FDA approval too. Whereas uh, the other uh, disorders, like uh, the most more prevalent disorders like uh, Parkinson's, stroke, uh, diabetes, uh, they are all in the pipeline. Uh, they are still in clinical trials and hopefully we'll uh, soon reach the approval stage too because the clinical trials so far have been, uh, uh, they have shown good results, but it's too early to say if uh, you will have 100% success rate with the stem cell therapy there. So it's still, uh, the, the trials are still on for such diseases. Now, besides uh, 
contributing to the overall health of the human population uh, the stem cell therapy also contributes to revenue generation so, uh, at a global level so it's estimated like during from 2019 to 2025 there roughly 28% of annual growth is uh, expected in terms of stem cell therapy market and that could uh, generate a revenue of close, say around 167 us dollars uh, 167 million US dollars, sorry. So uh, most of the developed as well as the developing nations are moving towards stem cell research and clinical trials for various diseases for stem cell banking. So uh, in all of this, uh, and they have a lot of projects in the pipeline too, where the clinical trials are on. So all of this uh, contributes majorly to the overall global market, overall global economy too. So besides just being uh, you know, used as the life science tool or uh, of, as a therapeutic tool in life sciences, they also contribute in a major, major way to the overall revenue generation. Now, another interesting concept that was that came into existence around 2012 was the concept of stem cell drugs. Now, what is stem cell drugs? So far, we were discussing about stem cell therapy, and now uh, this is stem cell drugs. Now. If you uh, go by the dictionary statement of drugs, it's actually a substance that can be used or consumed to treat or prevent a disease or to promote a general well-being of a person. So for, based on that uh, definition, stem cell drugs are also off-the-shelf products that are derived from stem cells. So what these products or drugs could be, they're usually the... Uh, uh, secreted factors of stem cells. So they could either be in the form of vesicles filled with various uh, biomolecules like proteins and RNAs and microRNAs, enzymes, whatever comes out of those stem cells. It's been seen and why they are, why these products are important is because over a few last few years it has been seen that the reparative function or the regenerative function of stem cells is more based on their uh, secretory factors than their actual like than their ability to actually replace a particular damaged area uh, like the cells of that damaged area so it's like it's not really the ce uh, cells per se that are uh, showing an uh, uh, effective like they are showing some beneficial effect towards the disease but it's actually the factors that are being se uh, secreted from the, those cells that are helping the, helping in the recovery of uh, damaged tissue. So that's why these products gain a lot of popularity and a lot of interest of the researchers. And now, they are, uh, um, like almost uh, 10 stem cell drugs till now have been approved by FDA for clinical applications. And mostly these uh, drugs are derived from the adult stem cells, which are the hematopoietic stem cells or the mesocarp. You have two minutes left, please. Yeah, it's. I'm just wrapping up. So uh, they probably uh, they uh, uh, modulate the immune responses as well as work through their secretory factors. Now this is just a uh, uh, like stating these. This is a list of all the approved uh, stem cell drugs, which you can go through by the link. And here is a general. Uh, your comparison between stem cell drugs and stem cell therapy. So stem cell drugs do not have batch to batch variation and uh, they are strictly regulated by GMP guidelines. So and they're like easily uh, viable off the shelf products. So they have certain benefits over the stem cell therapy as such, uh, majorly being the uh, avoiding avoiding the batch to batch variation. Now, besides that, we have various stem cell patches coming up, which have Heart for, for heart for retina that can replace and uh, repair the damaged tissues with uh, and they have been uh, these are still in the pilot uh, level but uh, with the stem cell patches for retina have been successful in macular degeneration disease also we have stem cell gun for burns which can be sprayed on the burned area of the skin and uh, repair that those uh, damaged area of the skin and stem cell injections for hair loss, which can rejuvenate the hair follicles for a better hair growth. So this is all in the pipeline yet, in the pilot level, and still being uh, studied at a larger level. 
So uh, we have a lot of uh, advantages and disadvantages besides their medical uh, advantages and their useful, uh, their like importance in the drug development studies. They also have certain um, negative aspects like they're time consuming to grow. Uh, the long-term effects of the cellular therapy are still to be seen, uh, like examined. And there could be certain ethical constraints with some of these types of stem cells are sometimes in uh, most of the countries. So with the pros, they also have pawns. So you need to strike a balance between the two to actually use them for therapeutic purposes. So overall, the summary is that stem cells have a huge potential for treating various diseases and uh, they can repair the damaged cells within the body. They can identify the disease mechanism, identify new drugs and toxins that can uh, or what the possible side effects of those toxins can be. They need a, a, a due a dear approval for before being administered to a patient to ensure the quality, safety, and efficacy of uh, this treatment. And also, they contribute to a major like to the global revenue in a major major way because of the various uh, stem cell projects that are in the pipeline, owing to their great potential in the therapeutic uh, or the clinical research area. So with this, I wind up my presentation. Uh, I hope I was able to shed some light on the recent trends in the uh, stem cell area and how they have impacted the biomedical research and the life science research. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for a very informative uh, presentation. And uh, now, um, uh, I would call upon Dr. Nirupama, Nirupama Dalakoti to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Thank you so much, Dr. Akriti. It was well explained and it was more than enough what I thought. Excellent. Thank you so much. I wish I could have a daughter like you. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> thank you so much. That was a huge, huge compliment. Thank you so much. God. And thank you for having me here. God bless you. Over to you, Dr. Preeti. Sir, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, I would like to call upon Dr. Nirupama Dalakoti for uh, to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Uh, Anjana Bhatia. Uh, over to you, Dr. Dalakoti. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Akriti, ma'am, for such a nice, informative lecture. And um, now it gives me immense pleasure in introducing our eminent speaker, Dr. Anjana Bhatia. Dean Equal Opportunity and Head of PG Department of Botany, Hans Raj Mahila Mahavidyalaya Jalandhar, Punjab. Dr. Anjana Bhatia is specialized in plant natural products and has wide experience in the field of research and publications and has published five books, 18 papers in various reputed national and international journals. Dr. Bhatia has won many awards in the field of research like National Award for Ruler Punjab regarding biofuel, Young Scientist Award from Punjab Academy of Sciences, Gold Medal from District Administration for Extraordinary Social Services. Ma'am, we are very privileged to have you on this conference. Now I request Dr. Anjana Bhatia to deliver her lecture on biofuel. Ma'am, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Nirupama. And it is my huge pleasure to be to be present here. I also thank Dr. Pandey for having me here. And it is indeed a great effort, International E-Conference. And I understand that uh, your team has been doing uh, continuously during the lockdown period. You've been continuously involved in the spread of knowledge, especially in the field of botany and uh, life sciences. So I feel privileged to be here. And uh, I'm going to speak on biofuels. Uh, let me know if I'm able to share my screen now so my screen is there with you no ma'am i'm not able to see the screen not yet no not yet yeah. okay uh, do do i have the privilege of uh, sharing the screen sure
right? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's it's there. Yes, ma'am. Very okay. much there. So yeah. now I'll we'll start with the presentation. My presentation yeah. is basically on biofuels, prospects, and problems. So. first of all let us let us just uh, see what the alarming situation is here coming 2030 we are going to be a whopping number on this planet uh, as you can see from this graph that we took as human species we took 300000 years to reach our first billion but only 12 years to reach our fifth and sixth billion and we are no way stopping and increasing population demands increasing energy uh look at this slide and you will have a fair idea of how much import we are doing in regards to energy for example coal natural gas oil india is not at all self dependent in energy and we are importing lots and lots of energy and that you know that pays a huge toll on our forex on our foreign um, investments and things like that so we are kind of not self dependent here in energy sector uh, see india's energy expenditure is nearly 300 Thirty thousand thousand dollars daily for foreign energy sources. So this is no mean task. Moving further, India lags behind in petroleum. In uh, although we have reserves, but those are not enough because we are a huge population, and we are spending lots of energy, especially petroleum. We are spending a lot. So even if they are the secondary need. they are actually needed for a well well defined economy now coming to the alternative sources of energy if you are not using the renewable energy what are the uh, non renewable energy sorry what are the other sources wind is there hydro power is there geothermal solar biomass we all are aware of these sources but as botanists what attracts us the most is the biofuels now what is biofuel it is not a new term we all are aware yet i'm just letting you know once again biofuel refers to the liquid or gaseous fuels that are predominantly produced from the biomass so biomass se jo fuel hame prapt hota hai wo hum keh sakte hain ki biofuel hai it is considered relevant technology which includes energy security which includes the it it is addressing the environmental concerns also when we talk of biofuels and foreign exchange savings are there socio economic issues related to the rural sector especially if we if we are paying interest to the biofuel sector then we are also paying interest to the socio economic issues related with the villages so these are the advantages of biofuels easily available from common biomass sources they are environmentally friendly and they are biodegradable so they contribute to the sustainability as well <clears throat> so what are the needs of biofuels a combination of rising costs shrinking supplies if we look at this diagram uh, this this map we have almost 53.3 years left for the energy which is non renewable so this was in 2018 minus 2 years 51.3 years almost left now and global climate change that is a major concern once again because of the pollution being caused by such fuels so according to the data of alternative fuels center usa the cleanest and safest alternative to petroleum and diesel is biodiesel which is followed by hydrogen and then electricity and then ethanol so bio diesel is a little bit different from what we talk of biofuel so bio diesel actually it includes a variety of ester based oxygenated fuels from biological sources so biological sources say direct if you are taking diesel so that is the bio diesel chemically it is defined as monoalkyl esters of long chain fatty acids derived from the lipids and bio diesel is better than your regular diesel fuel in terms of sulfur content the flash point aromatic content and biodegradability as well 
So now a little bit into the history of biodiesel. Biodiesel is not at all new. 1853, scientists E. Duffy and J. Patrick conducted trans esterification of vegetable oil. Once they trans esterified this oil, they had something like diesel in their hands. And the journey for diesel engine began in 1893 when Rudolf Diesel published the paper entitled The Theory and Construction of a Rational Heat Engine. Dr. Diesel used peanut oil to fuel one of his engines at the Paris Exposition. Then I think, yeah. Then at 19, 20, uh, 11 World's Fair in Paris, Dr. Diesel ran his engine on peanut oil. Moonfali ke tail pe, unhone apni gaadi chalai thi and declared that diesel engine can be fed with vegetable oils and will help considerably in the development of agriculture of the countries which use it. In 1980s, biodiesel plants opened in many European countries and many cities ran buses on biodiesel. European Union accounted for nearly 89% of all biodiesel production worldwide in 2005. In India, well, India has a rich, rich resource of biodiversity and many plants have that potential to become biofuel crops. So our national biofuel policy, which was drafted in 2009, it mandated to blend the 5% green biofuels into gasoline. Today, it has India has no diesel substitute of note, which barely managing to achieve 3% bioethanol blending in gasoline. So what have been the major hurdles in our diesel, biodiesel production or biofuel production? First, inadequate manufacturing capacity, then known availability of non edible vegetable oils and molasses so uh, another which uh, another uh, you know hurdle was both molasses based bioethanol and vegetable or tree bone oil based biodiesel are renewable fuels but they fare very badly in terms of net energy ratio and net carbon reduction so moving forward, India has been spending on research on biofuel technologies for more than a decade. And these are the major agencies which are involved in the biofuel production. CSIR, MNRE, that is Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. They have worked, they worked a lot in this field. Department of Science and Technology, Department of Biotechnology. And essential features of any sustainable technology suitable to India must be fuel production at competitive cost. It is very, very important. The cost point. Then low capex and deployed at medium scale. Feedstock agnostic technology, zero waste generation. This is important once again. Low water consumption. Now... Indian government launched the National Biodiesel Mission, identifying Jitropha as the most suitable tree bone oil seed for biodiesel production. And pilot program was started and extended to six states. However, due to acute shortage of Jitropha seeds, the government's ambitious plan did not materialize. And moreover, several existing biodiesel plants shifted operations to adopt multiple feedstock technology. For instance, they used uh, uh, they started using the cooking oils, the animal fat, uh, so there, uh, there they were in a bit of problem. So Planning Commission of India had set an ambitious target covering 11.2 uh, to 13.4 million hectares of land under Jetrofa by the end of the 11th five-year plan. Central government, several state governments provided for the fiscal deficits, but yet India kept lagging behind. The global experience in biofuel expansion has not been very inspiring and urge to shift to greener sources of energy rapidly. Most of the major biofuel producing countries resorted to staple food products or uh, food crops for production of bioenergy. So the situation may sound bleak, but yet there is huge potential here. Energy production from biomass has great potential. And Melvin Calvin, I'm quoting him, he is famous for his Calvin cycle. I'm really confident that plants that grow in semi arid regions of the world could be used to fulfill some of our chemical and energy needs of hydrocarbon. Here he talks of hydrocarbon. 
and all flesh is grass all grass is sun so we we have to look at plants for our energy needs plants face severe conditions plants face solar uv radiations desiccation conditions insects herbivores strong winds and yet they not only bloom they bloom with full biodiversity so plants have that chemical which with them to face all these severe conditions and what is the chemical wit of plants here the chemical wit of plants are the secondary metabolites being secreted by the plants so a humble plant synthesizes many more chemicals in its lifetime than whole of the world's chemists combined so these chemicals these secondary metabolites that the plants produce they can be tapped further for their biofuel potential the use of hydrocarbon producing plants for biofuels it was started by italians in ethiopia and then buchanan et al worked on thousands of hydrocarbon producing plant species and then mcloggan hoffman did an extensive research on diverse plant species from various parts of us see plants produce latex they produce oils resins hydrocarbons the various compounds accumulated by plants are unique and they are very very useful you can see this uh, picture this picture is of petrosporum resiniferum this is called the petroleum nut very very interestingly this is used by the indigenous populations to give energy in the form of light fire because they simply burn the nut and it burns like anything like your gas so petroleum nut is a very interesting plant and there are many such plants which are used by indigenous populations and we need to tap them the petroleum nut is rich in heptane and myrcene in dihydropetrepine and epinein these are all gasoline substances <clears throat> so plants hold the key to future another uh, nut is here this is all called candle nut direct away you can use this as a candle eleuritus mulicans it is a flowering tree in the spurge family euphorbiaceae it is also known as the candle berry so these are some of the videos i'm skipping them for now and moving forward so the world was hugely dependent on petroleum based energy and then biofuels came back into fashion during world war 1 when there was fossil oil shortage and then further crisis the 1973 crisis 79 crisis 2000 crisis led many countries like us brazil to start thinking of production of biofuels on a large large scale and in past 10 years biofuels have been embraced as a way to resolve some of the world's greatest challenges declining the fossil fuel supplies and high oil prices especially the climate change is also addressed here so these are the promises of biofuel biofuel produced from lignocellulosic biomass can significantly reduce our dependence on oil and create new jobs as well improve rural economy and ensure energy security but there is this challenge this is a bottleneck for lignocellulosic biomass derived fuels what is the challenge here the lack of technology for efficient conversion of biomass into liquid fuels new technologies are needed to replace the fossil fuels with renewable sources so these are the challenges once again food versus fuel this is the biggest biggest challenge being faced by the biofuel industry talking of india and other developing countries an estimated 27% of adolescents in developing countries are iron deficient and see in madhya pradesh this is a picture many many girls many many newborns they they are facing huge challenges in term of nutrition uh, this is once again a girl vishakha she weighed 2.3 kg and so suffers from severe malnutrition so india is one of those countries which is having huge divide nutritional divide and many of our population are suffering from malnutrition and one in 10 older people are also suffering from malnutrition why i'm talking this here i'm not talking this here because we cannot afford to convert our food plants like our corn our sugar cane our other food crops plants into biofuel because if we want to address the issue of biofuel we we cannot ignore the issue of food based plants so 
is India missing the biofuel bus? Uh, the biofuel policy uh, encourage the use of renewable energy sources as alternate fuels to supplement transport fuels. So these are the various countries who have actually used the biofuel in, in their aviation, like New Zealand, Air New Zealand has completed world's first second generation biofuel flight. Brazil, world's largest producer of biodiesel, it has green transportation visiting teams like World Cup, when, when it was there, they, their buses which used to carry the World Cup teams, they were powered with biofuel blends. And even USA, they are all blending biofuel into their regular fuel. And in India, we have to think of those lines. So what I've talked about, the food plants, I've talked about our issues. So what should be our strategy? We should be concentrating on plants which can grow on wasteland. In India, hectares of lands exist as wastelands, which could be converted into green oil fields. And this is a breakup uh, of some of the states, only a few of the states I'm breaking up here, who have such huge area of wasteland and many more states are having. So India should not actually miss this bus because we have wastelands and we have many plants which can grow in these wastelands and produce those, you know, pain based uh, secondary metabolites, the latex, which can be <coughs> further used as biofuel. So if we talk of today, August 2020, our national biofuel policy has these highlights. Controls and taxes on interstate movement of molasses. It is hindering the ethanol blending program. The biodiesel blending program is suffering due to 18% GST on biodiesel. Insufficient availability of raw material feedstock has hindered BBP. And use of food grains I've already talked about. I'll briefly, briefly, because I know time is uh, passing on. I'll just briefly rush over what we are doing here in our laboratory to meet the triple challenge of biofuel, looking for satisfactory answers of energy demand, stop the forced deforestation and produce and uh, multiple using uh, the plants which can be used otherwise also apart from giving the biofuel, we are concentrating on those plants. So our research, it was focused on on various plants of Punjab. We undertook some research to study the hydrocarbon content of plants collected from and around the areas of Jalandhar. Most of the collections were made during the months of March to July. Uh, because the extractables are reported to be high during these months, and uh, Jalandhar is... Rangana, please, yes, please I'm, conclude I'm, I'm, only two minutes I'm, left. Thank I'm you. Fine. Yeah. So I'll quick... Uh, we, we, we basically focused on euphorbia plants, 10 plants were selected and we got very good results with the euphorbia cotinifolia, which is also known as lalpati. So we prepared the extracts. Once we had prepared the extracts, we uh, subjected them to various tests and found out what was their biofuel potential through the various bio crudes that we extracted. So uh, interestingly, the bio crude that we got, it gave good results when we tried to convert it into biodiesel. And uh, the biodiesel, hence obtained, was tested for iodine value, acid value, peroxide value, and it was compared with that of Jetropha. And it was found to be quite similar, and in some uh, ma matters, it exceeded. So fuels with low ash content are preferably, so by, uh, Euphorbia cotinifolia had low ash content, and moisture content was also low. So I think we can focus on more such plants like Euphorbia cotinifolia, which can give good results, which can grow on wasteland, which are low water demanding plants, and which have other uses also. So, which can give us good results. So future research, I think, should be focused on such plants. And uh, there is uh, no, no, I, I don't hesitate in saying that this can improve the rural economy as well. So over here, I'll wind up. 
uh, they say it is okay to change so is running on biofuel for so let us not cut trees for biofuels let us not compromise on food but yes we can uh, the take home message is that we can use such plants which can grow on wastelands and we can work upon them so over here i'll stop and say thank you for such patient listening thank you all Thank you, ma'am, for a very informative lecture. And uh, various aspects of biofuels were new to me. Uh, very informative and very uh, well articulated lecture, ma'am. Thank you. Now, I call upon Dr. Nirupamad Alokuti to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Reena Dave, to our audience. Over to you, Dr. Alokuti. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Anjana, ma'am, for such a nice information about biofuels. Now, as we proceed towards the third lecture of the day, I am very pleased and honored to introduce our eminent speaker, Dr. Reena Dave, Associate Professor and Head of Department of Biology, Sri M and N Virani Science College, Rajkot. Dr. Reena Dave is PhD from JJT University, Rajasthan, and her research area was. angiospermic diversity taxonomy ethnobotany plant ecology and medicinal botany dr reena is member of board of study in botany as well as biotechnology at saurashtra university rajkot and she is also chair person in study board of botany at sri m and n virani science college autonomous college rajkot dr dave has contributed her expertise as judge in more than 25 national and international conferences and symposiums dr reena dave has delivered more than 50 lectures in igno gyanvani radio talk and more than 50 radio talk on vivid bharti and u vani rajkot she is life member of indian women scientist association and member of ngo named go healthy group and contribute educational activities with society dr reena dave is also associated with nirantar shikshan kendra academic staff college rajkot as resource person dr reena dave has published five textbooks on botany and she actively participated in examination department of saurashtra university and participated more than 30 national and international seminars symposiums and workshops Dr Reena has published six national and five international papers in various reputed scientific journals Dr Reena Dave is giving extensive contribution for cultural activities and socio economic counseling and has contributed for functionally activate active personality as subject expert in various job placement interviews ma'am we are very privileged to have you on this conference Now I request Dr. Reena Dave to deliver her lecture, ma'am. Please. Ma'am, ma'am, अपना mic unmute कर लीजिए, please. Yes. It's okay. Namaskar, everyone. First of all, let me express my gratitude towards Government PG College, Baspur, Uttarakhand, and Society for Research in Biological Science, organized international e-conference, research trained in life science, researches, challenges, and promises i also express my gratitude to and dr akruti srivastava from delhi dr ranjana bhatia from jalandhar dr jyoti alhavar from gurugram principal sri dr ak mishra principal pg 
श्री बासपुर जी श्री ज्ञान टीम डॉक्टर is a reporter and greetings to and participants मैम थोड़ा अपना माइक अपने पास कर लीजिए आपकी वॉइस साफ नहीं आ रही है ठीक है सर और ठीक है हाँ थोड़ा जो, थोड़ा जोर से बोल दीजिए इट गिव मी अ ग्रेट प्लेजर टू प्रेजेंट माई टॉक इन फ्रंट ऑल ऑफ यू अबाउट ऑफरबल मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स which contains very comprehensive account of their values regarding all over the globe heritable medicinal property plants a naturally occurring derived substances with minimal or no industrial processing that have been used to treat illness within a local or regional her healing practitioners so scope and future of her medicines are getting sufficient and significant attention in global health debates today's situation the covid all society recommends ayush ministry report immunity we all know that the thank you ayurved beings the science of the life propagates the gift of nature however due to the recent surge in the people's interest and awareness about and herbal treatments the plant based medicine are back in plant there is no plant in the world which is non medicinal or which cannot be used as so this and in first medic literature is medicine is expected to maintain ma'am aap ma'am aap apna video off ma'am aap apna ma'am please uh, keep your video off so that you you your, your sound would be better i think so because there is some network problem in you, from your side your voice is not yes, properly aap apna video off kar do to aap aapki voice sahi se aa jayegi apna slide sahi hai aapki slide sahi chal rahi hai ha sir aapko voice ke saath problem hai bas thoda sa lekin aapne apni slides off kar di sir aap ha ha voice कर आपकी वॉइस प्रॉब्लम कर रही है फिर से स्लाइड शेयर कर दीजिए और मैम अगर हेडफोन लगा लें आप तो मेरे ख्याल से इट इज बेटर फॉर अस हाँ हेडफोन लगाना चाहिए हाँ हाँ माइक के साथ में कुछ प्रॉब्लम है एक अनाउंसमेंट है सभी जो भी पार्टिसिपेंट्स हम लोग के साथ जुड़े हुए हैं चैट बॉक्स में इतनी बार आपसे रिक्वेस्ट किया जा रहा है कि आप अपने प्लीज वीडियो को ऑफ रखें माइक को ऑफ रखें तो अगर आप नहीं करेंगे तो मेरे ख्याल से हम आपको ऑटोमेटिकली रिमूव कर देगा क्योंकि तो बार बार ये अनाउंसमेंट किया जा रहा है चैट बॉक्स में डाला जा रहा है कि आप अपना वीडियो ऑफ रखें प्लीज सर ठीक है ठीक है सर 
ठीक है ठीक है नॉट्स ओके प्लीज यस यस नहीं मैम आपकी वॉइस क्लियर नहीं है देर आर इंडिकेटिंग सर जस्ट मिनट Yes, sir. It's okay. Hello. Yes, Hello. Sir, okay. बहुत हल्की आवाज आ रही है आपकी आवाज हल्के भी आ रही है और कट भी रही है आवाज आप बोलिए बोलिए देखते हैं बोलिए हाँ हाँ सर now of uh, medicinal plant future scenario is the popularity of the plant based medicine is expanding trends aapki awaaz cut cut ke aa rahi madam aapki awaaz cut cut ke aa rahi continuous nahi aa rahi hai so to maine ko lagta hai ki aawaaz cut to fir network ka issue hoga sir isme to bilkul aap screen on kar rahe hain नेटवर्क का इशू है चलिए आप वो आप शुरू कीजिए चलिए ठीक है आप बोलिए यस वी हैव योर डिस्कशन रिटायर द हर्बल पेटेड द फिनोमेनल राइज इन द minimal side effects the herbal medicine kuch rejoin karo band kar de aur rejoin watch some network problem is okay मैम आप थोड़ा सा अपना सिस्टम को सही कर लीजिए और उसके बाद दोबारा री ज्वाइन करिएगा ठीक है यस यस सर इन बिटवीन डॉक्टर अतुल इन बिटवीन प्लीज कॉल डॉक्टर ज्योति जी जी सर हम लोग आगे बढ़ते हैं तब तक मैम अपना थोड़ा सा हम सही कर लेती हैं ठीक 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 सर ठीक सो सॉरी फॉर दिस इंटरप्शन दीज आर द इश्यूज वी डील विद दीज ई कॉन्फ्रेंसेस बट नेवरटेलेस Uh, I would like uh, to call upon Dr. Nirupama Talakoti to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Rina, uh, Dr. Uh, Jyoti Ahilawar. Uh, over to you, Dr. Talakoti. Okay, sir. I am pleased to introduce our eminent speaker, Dr. Jyoti Ahilawar, Assistant Professor at School of. Industrial Science, GD Goenka University, Gurgaon. Dr. Jyoti holds PhD from the Maharshi Dayanand University, Haryana. Dr. Jyoti Alawat is an expert in the area of plant tissue uh, culture and molecular biology. She is. She has taught these subjects for nearly five years at universities such as Maharshi Dayanand University, Rohtak, Haryana, and GD Goenka University, India. Dr. Jyoti served in. research position at tissue culture and cryo preservation unit and division of genomic resources icar and bpgr new delhi in the field of tissue culture and cryo preservation and dna based genetically modified events detection respectively dr jyoti holds expertise in dna extraction pcr amplification real time pcr gel electrophoresis quantification data analysis dna based gm detection of genetically modified crops and ss marker screening analysis in little millets ma'am we are very privileged to have you in this conference now i request ma'am to deliver her lecture ma'am please 
a very thank you to, Over to you. Uh, Dr. Nirupama Dalakoti. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for uh, welcoming here, and it's a privilege for me to be a part of this uh, international conference. Uh, sir, uh, Dr. I'm very thankful to Dr. Adarsh Pandey, but uh, I'm uh, putting my request here that I need uh, three, four minutes to connect me uh, to my camera because some uh, problem is coming in getting connected to it. So give me three, four minutes and I'll be back here, sir. Sure, 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 madam, sure. Yes. Just three, four minutes. I'm just, uh, so because I'm using the institute, uh, this uh, laptop and it, we need to have an IT permission to, you know, please. sure. Thank please, you so please, much. Please, just four minutes. please. Okay, please. Dr. Athalopreti, in between, you please uh, let them know the speakers, the, the, pre the presenters of the conference who are going to present uh, his or her research paper in the next session of this international e-conference. Okay, sir. That will be fine. So, in, in the next session, we have uh, 16 uh, presentations and the, uh, I'm just uh, taking names and these uh, speakers will present in this sequence. The uh, first is uh, Dr. Sanjeev K. Gupta from Department of Botany, GD College, Baliwala, uh, JNK, India. Number two, uh, Dr. Abha Dikshit, HBTU Kanpur. Number three, Dr. Anik Sarkar, Department of Botany, uh, University of Calcutta, West Bengal. Number four, Ria Johnson, uh, Department of Botany, University of Calicut, Kerala. Number five, Dr. Asha Rani, Department of Botany, Bareilly College, Bareilly. Number six, Dr. E. J. Josikuti, Department of Botany, uh, Thalassery, Kannur. Number seven, Yusuf S. School of Business Studies, Sharda University, Noida, UP. Number eight, Dr. Ritu, Ritu Sharma, Department of Biosciences, Himachal Pradesh University, Shimla. Number nine, Sanjeev Kumar Gupta, Department of Botany, Government Degree College, Bilawar, Jammu and Kashmir. Number ten, Munawar Fazal, Department of Botany, College of Commerce, Arts and Science, Patna. And number 11, Dr. B. Priyadarshini, Department of Botany, Annamalai University, Tamil Nadu. Number 12, uh, Shail Vajpayee, Dr. Shail Vajpayee, uh, Department, of, uh, Department of Zoology, SN Saint College, Kanpur. Number 13, Dr. Romana Akhtar, Department of Zoology, Government PG College, Kistwar, Jammu and Kashmir, India. Number 14, B. Kavita, Dr. B. Kavita, Department of Botany, Raisina University, Karnool, Andhra Pradesh, India. Number 15, Dr. Vivek Kumar, uh, MLSN College, Mandi, Himachal Pradesh. And number 16, Dr. Neha Kapoor, Department of Biotechnology, School of Applied Science, Suresh Gyan Vihar University, Jaipur, Rajasthan. So these are the speakers and these will read their uh, presentation in the uh, given sequence uh, certificate of certificates for presentation will be uh, provided separately and uh, uh, for uh, participation these will be through uh, feedback only so thank you and all the best all Over, over to you, Dr. Adash Pandey. We are waiting for Dr. Jyoti now. Dr. Jyoti Singh, you want to tell us about the time of the presentation and about that? Would you like to say something? Yes, Dr. Jyoti. Thank you very much, Dr. Adish Pandey, for bearing this inconvenience. And uh, once again, I thank oh, okay. uh, once again I thank everyone to give me the chance to speak to everyone and uh, present my views or uh, present uh, the current scenario which is going on due to COVID-19, which is a very important uh, topic nowadays, and how it is impacting the agriculture. 
Right. So there was a very good introduction. Uh, I again thank uh, this whole organization, whole event organizers to welcome me here. And I'm here to present. So just a moment, I'll share my screen um, so that the presentation can be visible to everybody. Is it visible? Yes, 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 yes please. Okay. So uh, in today's presentation, we will be, uh, I will be presenting the impact of COVID-19 on agriculture. As we all know that agriculture plays a major role in the GDP of world or Asia, wherever we talk about it is the major key holder or the stakeholder where we contribute a major portion. So before moving ahead, let us talk about coronavirus. What is this coronavirus? We all are so scared and so afraid of this particular term, COVID-19. So this is basically just ending dealt by a positive attitude in every spectrum or every stream. We, when we talk about in uh, society, so we have been given few key points which we can focus on and we can avoid it because it's been five to six months and we already are into a phase of it to you know, survive this pandemic and uh, how uh, by focusing on various important key points. I think some see. network problem with uh, Dr. Jyoti. Uh, the voice is not clear, madam. Madam, your voice is clear. Sir, I'm just trying uh, again. Uh, just let me know. Am I audible now to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Audible, ma'am. Perfect, perfect. Yes, we'll move ahead. All right. I uh, hope my slides are also visible to everyone. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Sir. Yes, ma'am. All right. So uh, we were discussing. See, we all know that COVID-19 is unique because we know that it affects the, uh, it is a unique virus because we know that it is affecting the supply. It is affecting the demand. It is affecting the market and it is creating a shock, right? So the global economy was, uh, already in a precarious place in 2019 and the risk of global recession in 2020 is extremely high. We know that as nations shut down economic activity to limit the spread of COVID-19. As production is curtailed around the world, many necessary firms, they have their inputs which are getting suffered because of this. So we will be discussing uh, various uh, key points or various factors in this whole presentation the contents will be, we will be discussing about the visualizing of the importance of agriculture in the world and the Indian economy. As we discussed just now that the Indian economy or it is world's economy, the agriculture is the prime factor which is playing a major role in the uh, GDP. We'll be discussing about the COVID-19 pandemic impact on important sectors of agriculture, the current and potential impact, then key policy recommendations. In this, we will be discussing various agricultural organizations and their recommendations and the steps which have been taken by them to ease this pandemic zone which is going on. So how well the COVID-19 impacts have been addressed in agriculture, food security, and livelihoods in India. Food agriculture organization, how it is responding to COVID-19 and how uh, effectively it is working to ease or to you know uh, normalize the situation and to make people or the various firms of this uh, whole era to uh, you know um, uh, ease it and to face it with a confident and a sol uh, matter solving position when we talk about agriculture as i am here yes somebody was unmuted i think in between when we talk about agriculture as a share of GDP, it varies from country to country. We all know this. The country segmentation demonstrates a pattern that as countries become less agriculture based, the relative importance of agriculture GDP decreases and there is a reduction in agricultural employment. There is a continuing decline in the size of the primary agriculture sectors GDP and employability. We all know that developing countries are more likely than developed countries to rely on agriculture as a larger percentage of GDP. As we can see here in the 
map which is given here the lighter shades indicate a smaller share of gdp the country contributing to the gdp in a smaller share and the darker shades are the larger contributors contributors to the towards gdp when we talk about india so india contributes to 20% to 50% of towards gdp in agriculture when we talk about the role of agriculture in asia so here we see that again the major portion which is uh, depending upon the on agriculture and the employability we know that agriculture holds a very less percent in the gdp but employability it holds 40 to 50% of share so this makes agriculture as an important sector important factor to discuss here how it is getting affected in covid 19 zone the pandemic how it is affecting here uh, by this graph we can easily find out like how the uh, india gdp from last 3 years been getting affected because of agriculture it is estimated that uh, india's agriculture sector accounts only for around 14% of the country's economy but 42% for total employability so after discussing the major role of agriculture in um, like how it is uh, affecting the gdp particular gdp of a particular country so now we discuss we move ahead now we all know that while we are discussing agriculture as a major event or major part here so uh, the seven primary sectors of agriculture which are contributing most to real wealth good morals and happiness here we will be discussing about agriculture the seven primary sectors dairy manufacturing equines forestry horticulture seafood and sports turf when we talk about sports turf sports turf is the artificial grass which has been used in uh, various grounds or uh, various uh, places like we all know that dubai it totally made up of artificial grass so uh, the whole vegetation is because of this artificial or the sports turf so it is uh, these are the major seven uh, sectors of agriculture will be discussing here so covid-19 pandemic the first which we are going to discuss is covid-19 pandemic impact on important sectors of agriculture covid-19 pushes agriculture sector further into fiscal woes when we talk about uh, the stock or the availability of the Dr. Jyoti, your slides are not changing, and she is mute also. And you are muted too. Dr. Jyoti, can you hear me? डॉक्टर ज्योति यस सर आई एम कमिंग बैक एक्चुअली सम नेटवर्क इश्यू अकर्ड एंड माय स्लाइड्स आर नॉट गेटिंग चेंज्ड आई एम जस्ट सॉर्टिंग इट आउट आई एम सो सॉरी फॉर द इनकन्वीनियंस मैम योर स्लाइड्स आर पॉज्ड या दे आर पॉज्ड डॉक्टर ज्योति आई एम ट्राइंग सो कैन यू हियर डॉक्टर ज्योति यस मैम Dr. Jyoti, your slides are paused. Uh, is it is it uh, working now, sir? Just a moment. Dr. Jyoti, your slides are not changing, and you and you are mute too. I think I am audible now, and my slides are changing. You are no, audible. Your voice is not clear. Changing. Sir, is it changing now? Some problem in audio and video are no, paused. 
sir nothing is visible excuse me can you make me uh, this thing clear that whether it is changing or not sir no you are on 10th slide the slides time. are not changing you are on 10th slide you are Wait, still on the first slide no right now it is on 10th slide or first slide sir 10th slide 10th slide i can see the 10th slide the covid 19 pauses agriculture sector further into physical works uh okay just a moment sir has it changed has it changed to the 11th one no no, no. so then i have to do one thing i have to share my screen again and uh, i'll come back to this okay, okay. Have... go ahead go ahead yeah please please take your time yeah sure i have to stop presenting and then again i have to share it i hope it is coming now yes it is visible now change it okay so we are on the slide uh, covid 19 uh... yes yes 11 slide perfect perfect all right actually uh, there was a problem in the net and i don't know how to it uh, suddenly got stopped all right so uh, we were discussing about the covid 19 uh, pushes agriculture sector further into fiscal wars where we were discussing that the problems in agriculture at the moment are primarily related to labor availability the inability to access markets for produce due to issues in transportation as well as operation of markets so the non availability of labor has hurt operations in many parts right some parts of agriculture that have the luxury of deploying technology for harvesting like paddy and wheat the crop of uh, kharif and rabi uh, rabi they have been uh, the more uh, sufferers because of the manual labor which was not transported they were not allowed to transport and the increasing use of mechanical harvesters for paddy has helped in the present circumstances uh, though their interstate movement has been severely curtailed so uh, when uh, it comes to the prices uh, say prices of agricultural commodities it dropped by 20% due to covid-19 outbreak the traders across the country they struggle and they were uh, trying to combat the minim uh, to minimize the effect we know that various markets at various states were suffering a lot and they were finding out various ways to you know uh, come out of it and due to that the whole stock got deteriorated and it would vanish totally then when we talk about the uh, impact of covid-19 on food and agriculture there were various sectors which were suffered on a higher percent and some were suffered on the lower percent some were why we are talking that they were suffered to the lower percent because their supplies were carried out by one or the other means because they were the prime important things which need which a person need in a daily life and we cannot survive uh, avoiding those so the low percent which was affected was the cereal vegetables like milk fruits they were the daily usage right so they can be, can cannot be avoided so those markets were kept open by the government norms and conditions which have been implemented and the raw materials basically the raw materials like oil and uh, the other industry factories the fertilizer factories they were at stake at that time and they were not given you know full access to the market so these were the industrial uh, commodities uh, which were at the stake and they suffered because of that then various uh, sectors uh, in uh, bakery even bakery products were not allowed they were not considered as the main important part to be involved in daily consumption when we talk about essential foods food delivery online groceries they were started up and for some time it was even been put at stop there were various good measures which have been taken and by the particular organizations to you know cope up with the ongoing uh, pandemic so they were not largely impacted because uh, the e-commerce based food delivery platforms were allowed at that time and they were given special instructions to follow the various uh, norms to you know restrict the uh, spread of covid-19 they were properly sanitizing the stuff they were properly being uh, equipped with the pp 
and finally they were whenever they were visiting they were allowed to visit at the gate of the particular society and they were not allowed to access the particular home just to avoid this chain of spread when we talk about the agri foods or agri inputs the high percent or uh, the impact on the sector was online food delivery also because uh, we know that e-commerce was allowed but still the people were facing problem in you know surpassing the territory like one state was not allowed to enter the access to the other state so there were they were facing a lot of problems and the whole delivery was not being, even been possible we all know that when the mondays were open that time the spread of covid-19 was huge the percent which enhanced was the huge so once they you know they gave a leniency that it could be opened but once it the spread shoots up high then it was again put on hold so this was the major sector which was you know affecting or getting affected when we talk about the current and the potential impact so uh, we know that the agriculture inputs are higher in the society the primary agriculture basically which deals with the seeds agrochemicals fertilizers the impact is likely to be low on both primary agriculture production of usage of uh, agri inputs like we talk about seed pesticide and fertilizers the migratory labor movement for harvesting wheat paddy pulses was affected majorly insulating the rural food production areas it holds a great answer to the macro impact of covid-19 on indian food sector as well as large economy post ministry of agriculture press release crop procurement and mandi operations are yet to be streamlined they were not streamlined by that time because as we discuss uh, just now that because of the spread of this the huge shoot up in that percent of the sufferers or the percent of the cases so it was put on hold and it needs to be streamlined and this may result in low sowing in the upcoming crop season because these were put on hold and also impact sale of agriculture inputs in the kharif and the ravi season there are few issues on interstate movement of skilled and the semi skilled labor that need to be sorted out that is still not been sorted out at complete rate because it's been allowed in few states and few states are totally not allowing them raw material supplies are not impacted as of now as the measures taken by central government should ease supply chain issues key policy recommendations in key policy recommendations uh, we will uh, uh, see we know that the various organizations are there various uh, agriculture organizations which have uh, implemented few of the strategies to cope up not to uh, make the whole economy suffer so they have uh, sorted out few issues and they when we talk about national policy on food supply chain we know that state and center they classified their uh, basically they classified the food items like what are the important food items and which can be supplied with the zero hurdle with no obstacles and some are they can be you know put on hold for example when we talk about the poultry when we talk about the bakery so they can be uh, uh, when we talk about the major food items which are required which are a part of the daily life so as per this they were categorized and they were segregated and finally the norms were being set and the recommendations were being given to it we know that the existing infrastructure of gst fast tag was used to for smooth movement of essential food items we all must be knowing that every at a particular state border we uh, have the toll plazas there and we could easily identify nowadays that the fast tag track is totally different which you know ease the movement and it is just a quick movement it allows the quick movement of the vehicles and the raw material which is required instead of being in the whole line and facing the whole trouble so there were easing financial stress also in the sector there was support for food and agri inputs delivery personnel there were various uh, other sectors which have been you know eased and their uh, supply were made more accessible to the public by e-commerce facility when we talk about the addressing how the government or various organizations are addressing this covid-19 impact on agriculture food security so there are various mitigations which hit on the economy when we talk about the ifpri so this is basically the international food policy research institute and uh, 
here it suggests that india must be prepared to scale it up as an event unfold easing the economic impacts through even greater public program support and policies that keep market functioning fao which is food and agriculture organization it analyzes it it is having a different uh, way of working see first it analyzes the situation then it collects the data the data basically analyzing is through a series of technical and policy brief which presents quantitative qualitative assessment of the pandemic impacts then it has a assessment so that assessment is been carried out it conducts the assessment which is basically through the data lab or using the big data through artificial intelligence so it carried out a global assessment that identifies and track policy responses countries adopted during past crisis so it is studying it is a basically a review of literature or we can call it as a study which was from the past how the past pandemic have been addressed by various countries so it is like a thorough study analyzing conducting various surveys and then finally coming up with a particular their own strategy of dealing with it so that the affected families can meet the critical household needs without selling off key assets this was the major issue because the uh, job was lost by various people and they were you know uh, the key assets were being sold to meet their personal life responsibilities or their livelihoods to make it easy the food was not even available to people for all the three meals were not available and uh, we know that our the our government has taken a lot of uh, initiatives and they have successfully come out in providing everyone at least uh, to deal or to have the access towards the regular uh, livelihood or the basic needs of a particular day when you talk about niti ayog niti ayog it suggested that uh, the mandi norms relaxation should be there for farmers for 6 months at least it was initially was declared for 6 months but now it is not for 6 months it's been extended now and the niti ayog members they further suggested that uh, farmers be allowed to take the processed or the cleaned up produce directly to the warehouse instead of finding a mediocre in between they are been given a freedom to access directly to the warehouse the international dairy federation when we talk about idf the international dairy federation it uh, and the dairy associates the processors they have been issued public statements and uh, for consumers on the safety measures put in place and commitments of the actors of the dairy chain because once you are providing once you are uh, dealing with the supply and then you all have to when whenever you are associated with a particular organization you have to stick to the norms and the conditions which have been finalized by that if you are not following that you are out of that chain because you are not there to take the measures to which are there you know to stop the spread of covid-19 they have passed on their own guidelines for the prevention of covid-19 they have passed on their own norms and conditions which are which were strictly followed by the uh, person who are associated with that particular uh, you know the chain or the particular uh, organization which was dealing in meeting the livelihoods of the people when we talk about mpi the ministry of primary industries so these were these are the various organizations the agricultural organizations and how they helped the whole nation to cope up or to mitigate the covid-19 pandemic effects which were you know prevailing majorly in the society when you talk about mpi it is set up a registration system for those businesses which intend to continue to operate during the lockdown because various businesses are there which can't be stopped if we are going to stop those businesses it will affect the livelihood of the people and it will it would have created a lot large havoc in the society to cope up so just to avoid those all issues they have uh, continued the operation of those businesses workplaces they instructed that workplaces must strictly follow the guidelines to avoid the spread of covid-19 so if they are going to follow that they can continue working they can continue operating then all essential businesses who wish to operate under the level for covid-19 they were uh, they were they should send their uh, registration forms and they should send their whole write up how well they are going to deal with the situation what are their basic uh, points which will be more kept into mind which will be more considered and how they are going to 
withstand this pandemic zone or this pandemic era or this pandemic time which is going on when we come to the icar we know that it's indian council of agriculture research it is a major organization in india for agriculture uh, associates so it has issued crop specific advisories to farmers asking them to take general uh, precautions and safety measures they ask them to do this whole thing during harvesting post harvesting operations storage and marketing of rabi and kharif crops so icr for this said that its institutes are providing food and ensuring hygiene in nearby laborer colonies and they are uh, the whole uh, staff of icr they have contributed one day salary which was amounting like 6.6 .6 crore to pm cares and to you know combat the covid 19 issues and uh, then they have offered all their guest houses in different states for quarantine use so they have extended they have exempted the agriculture operation from harvesting to movement of produce to mandis from lockdown rules so these uh, were the various uh, steps have been taken these, these were the various steps which have been taken by the reputed uh, agriculture organization to combat covid-19 infects ma'am you have two more minutes left fine sir i'll, I'll just find them so Thank when we talk about the market intelligence see we all know that covid-19 and the risk of food supply chains the, how we have to respond how the market is responding to it how the market intelligence is responsible or it's like quite obvious that market has to be intelligent enough to deal with the situation so we know that as the economic impact of covid-19 pandemic emerges and global restrictions take a heavy toll on industry our news data and analysis give you the essential intelligence you need to make sense of the market as the situation continues to evolve marketresearch.com is a site which has been provided and we uh, been provided the update data over there of market intelligence on covid-19 how it could help the business how it could help the business leaders to assess the corona fight so uh, when we are we are actually towards the end of this and uh, we all know that it's like brainstorming is the nexus of ideas there is a question to everybody who is present in this conference will covid-19 cause another food crisis so this is an early review you we all have to think wisely and we all have to you know work towards because lots of news are there what today we are going the social media is creating a lot of impact on our minds because we the reality is different and the kind the news has been taken by the social media is totally different but today we are hearing a positive about it and the next day it's totally changed and the same way our mind is also getting carried away so it's the right time that we have to think and we have to carry out a brainstorming session which should come out with ideas and we should know that how covid 19 can be uh, do you think that it is it will cause another food crisis what i feel my views are totally different and your views also could be different from mine so uh, this is a right time to think wisely and uh, come up with your ideas and this is a open topic which is given to you to think at the end my end this is the my last last slide where i have uh, involved a famous quote by m Uh, our uh, famous agriculturist the famous scientist m swaminathan he said once he said my uh, advice is to develop greater pride and confidence in our farmers and farming based on how they converted a ship to mouth existence into a legal right to food farmers and farming were given low prestige in the past and you know what he said he said that this situation should change and we should regard every farmer as a scientist as we know that agriculture department here the main scientist is the farmer who is creating that particular crop without with dealing all the environmental constraints and finally is coming out out with a good yield so the six major impacts of agriculture market and uh, farm prices supply chain shutdowns shortages farmers health the farmer workforce worker safety and the personal protective equipment they have to be dealt wisely and let's today take a oath to unite against covid-19 and come out with flying colors thank you so much for hearing and your patience thank you ma'am for a very informative uh, uh, presentation although the slides uh, were keep on uh, sticking 
uh, okay. I'm still on yes 15 or 16 slide I don't know uh, yes uh, but uh, I think we are having some problem with network. Uh, fine, fine. Okay, okay. But uh, can, yeah. so thank can you, you thank, thanks anyways for sharing your views. Thank you. And I, I'm not sure whether uh, Dr. Rina Dave with us is back with us or not. Dr. Dave, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, okay, ma'am. You, you you can you can resume your presentation. Thank you. Yes, sir. Dr. Inadabe, kindly sum up your presentation in five or six minutes, please. Thank you. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. So, let's continue okay. with our topic. Let's continue our topic, scope and future of medicinal plant. Medicinal plant. As you know, and the herbal products have minimal side effects, and it's still a immune system. So, demand in all over the world. So, what is natural plant? I just sum up. So, as we know, that the herbal medicinal plants are. Our potential source metabolites include comedines, flavonoids, steroids. These are plant, regional medicinal plant, lemon, holy basil, mint, etc. number opposed for the term medicinal plant. So is any plant which is Organ parts contain substances that can be purposes for the plant. There are three types. Synergic medicine means work together. All interact simultaneously. Can complement or damage other than natural Support of some medicinal or official medicine plants. So, medicinal it's proven that the component is by their ability to prevent the appearance of the uses of the chemical remedies, which will be used when the disease is already present. Some importance and scope of medicinal plant in India. So, the non medicinal plants can be cultivated. And so oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, you are not audible at all. Hello? Other sir, is voice clear to you? Is ma'am's voice clear to you? Sir? No, it's not clear to me. So, I, I think it is time to bind up uh, oh, and sir. say thank you to Dr. Inadabe. It was very uh, informative lecture indeed, but due to some technical problems, we are not able to hear uh, her voice. So kindly say thank you to Dr. Rina Dabe. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Obrati, over to you. Oh. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Ma'am, your voice is not clear, so we'll, we'll try to adjust you in uh, the next session, uh, if, we, if we can. Okay. So okay. moving on to yeah. our... Uh, yes, sir. sorry, sorry, very sorry, ma'am. So moving towards... To the next uh, session, I would like to call Dr. Nirupama Dalapoti to uh, sequentially call all the uh, presenters. Dr. Preeti, please call Dr. Preeti Singh for next session. Dr. Preeti Singh? Okay, okay. Dr. Preeti Singh. Dr. Preeti Singh. So, I would like to call upon Dr. Preeti Singh from Kanpur to call upon all the presenters sequentially. Dr. Hello. Priti Singh, it's, uh, it's uh, over to you. It's your uh, session, now second session. Now call all the participants and uh, also speak about the rules and regulations if you have prepared it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Me, Dr. Priti Singh, co-organizing secretary of this international e-conference on recent trends in license research, challenges and promises. 
we got a number of abstracts as well as research papers but after screening only 16 papers are selected for presentation the organizing committee deputed me for this uh, deputed me this responsibility to conduct this session so i welcome all the presenters and wish them best of luck dear presenters you all have, will get 5 minutes plus 1 minute uh means you have to complete it in 5 minutes or uh, in some cases if you have some uh, points then you can complete it in 1 minute kindly try to sum up in time in our jury we have two eminent workers from iit delhi excuse me priti singh ma'am 5 yes. plus than 5 minutes for uh, presenter and 1 minute for question session thank you okay uh and um, we have two eminent uh, workers in our jury dr kavya dashohara and mr gyan dattak tripathi both are associated with iit delhi i welcome both of you uh, may i know uh, may i now start the presentation sir take permission from dr kavya who is in the jury i am not now in the <laughs> session okay i am just present to see the papers dr kavya please allow us can you hear me dr kavya hello ma'am mr gyan and dr kavya hello dr kavya was there but uh, I can't see her now. Okay, sir, we should start. Yes, 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 yes. We can't wait, Dr. Atul Preeti, and we are here. Don't worry. Yes, uh, all our uh, participants and um, all the members of jury, uh, all are uh, judging this presentation. Okay. So uh, the first speaker is Dr. Sanjeev Kumar Gupta, Department of Botany, Government Degree College, Bilawa, Jammu and Kashmir. Dr. Sanjeev Kumar Gupta ji, please start your presentation, sir. Yes, sir. You are there. Good morning. I am going to share my screen. Uh, Jyoti Alawat, ma'am, your screen is still on. Please stop uh, presentation. Fine, ma'am. Ma so, am I visible? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yes, yes. We can yes. see your screen, but your voice is not so clear. Okay. Okay. Madam, presentation is start. Hoga hai. Ab kaha hai? My sir, Sanjeev Kumar Gupta. Arey? Yes, Sanjeev Kumar Gupta. Abi itni der se aapko aavaz laga ja rahi hai. Aap hai nahi? So, it's not the presentation. It's the actual class. है तो आपको ही फैसला देना है तो आप आपको तो आप ये बुला रही मैडम आपको बार बार आप आप आपकी आवाज ही नहीं आ रही तो सुन ही नहीं पा रहे तो आप कैसे कौन कौन काव्या मैम काव्या मैम यू आर वेलकम हियर मेरे को आवाज आ रही है मैं
जी 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 अभी अभी कर देते काव्या मैम काव्या मैम काव्या मैम हेलो काव्या मैम प्रीति सिंह मैम काव्या मैम तो मैम ये सब देख रही हैं उनके स्पीकर में कुछ प्रॉब्लम आ गई है उनका फोन आया था वो देख रही हैं और अपना डिसीजन दे देंगे आप प्लीज कह रही हो सर जब वो आपसे बात कर रही थी तब उनकी वॉइस आ रही थी मतलब वो उल्टा हो रहा है उनके साथ जब वो म्यूट कर रही पता है नहीं तो... उनके, आ, पता नहीं क्या है बहरहाल आप, आप अपना कंटिन्यू रखिए वो कर देंगे अपना संजीव गुप्ता सर अभी आपकी वॉइस नहीं आ रही थी योर टाइम स्टार्ट नाउ संजीव गुप्ता सर प्रेजेंट प्लीज डॉक्टर संजीव गुप्ता डॉक्टर संजीव गुप्ता डॉक्टर संजीव गुप्ता प्लीज स्टार्ट योर प्रेजेंटेशन अगर वो नहीं सुन पा रहे हैं तो नेक्स्ट स्पीकर को बुला लीजिए द सेकंड स्पीकर इज आबाद बट ही इज ही इज प्रेजेंटिंग सर अंटिल अंटिल ही stops presenting next speaker will not be able to present nahi nahi dusra present karega to inka apne aap gayab ho jayega okay 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 then the then we should move on speaker is um uh, dr abadikshit from hptu kanpur thank you ma'am thank you so much uh, my presentation is uh, there on biological control can you see
rights and the instances both size and steady survival of recon uh, inhibitor by lower uh, temperature condition so uh, when we are considering the artificial diet we are using three uh, base diet right number one rice bean and wheat and maize so we can see the rice bean uh, diet the number of recon inhibitor in us are more less by wheat is somewhat more than the rice and in case of maize based rice it is higher than then wheat so uh, milk issue is also the great for the Yes. So, uh, the yeah, the 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 here we use media that Yes, I am uh, ready, ma'am. But uh, I am unable to share my screen. Hello. Uh, uh, can please, you uh, can you please share. stop sharing screen? Oh, thank you. Hello. Yes, Ani. Uh, yes. Am I audible too? You. Yes. Yes, you are audible. Sir. Okay, so thank you, thank you so much. uh good afternoon everyone uh here i am anik shorka from department of botany university of calcutta today i am going to present my work entitled nitric oxide the potent signal mediator in ketosan nanoparticles in these defense responses in chili uh actually this is the story of fooling our god that is the farmers every day we are fooling our god so as we are all known that plant and pathogens they are two beautiful co evolutionary partners okay and plant and pathogen this co evolutionary partners are the basis of innate immunity induction in the plant body the present story composed of three major things first one is the host that is the chili plant which is one of the most important plant of india and worldwide and the second one is elicitor here So we have applied ketosan nanoparticle as a potent elicitor molecule. Elicitors are those molecules which can mimic the pathogen action. And the third one is the potent signal mediator nitric oxide. This is the small bioactive and lipophilic gaseous molecule which is involved in various pathophysiological processes in plants, from plant developmental process to activation of plant defense responses. And the major objectives of the proposed study. or induction of innate immunity in chili plants using a biotic elicitor ketosan nanoparticle and understanding the mechanism behind this induction of innate immunity 
and these are the major steps involved in the study at first we have selected the healthy chili plants then the plants are treated with the elicitor and different nitric oxide modulators as i have already told that nitric oxide can function as important signal mediator in various pathophysiological processes here we have applied sodium nitroprusside as our potent nitric oxide donor and lm the nitric oxide synthesis inhibitor and after 24 hours of incubation with this modulator and the elicitor molecule defense Filing was recorded and initial the general physiological role such as the seed germination and the vigor index was checked after application of elicitor here we can see that the ketosan nanoparticle treatment improved 15.95 percent germination rate and 1.88 fold seedling vigor over water treated control set and second lignin as we are all known that it is a important polyphenolic structure that can hinder the pathogen entry inside the plant body here we have seen that during the treatment of the elicitor and nitric oxide donor lignin generation was elicited or the improved and when we treated our plants with the nitric oxide inhibitor or nitric oxide synthesis inhibitor we found that the lignin generation was compromised in case of combination of ketosan nanoparticle and uh, nitric oxide inhibitor treatment we also found that the lignin development was compromised similarly callus an important beta 1 3 glucan polymer which can function as the temporary cell wall that was also promoted in case of both nitric oxide donor and ketosan nanoparticle treatment and it was compromised in case of nitric oxide synthesis inhibitor and the combination of elicitor and nitric oxide synthesis inhibitor treatment and the next thing is that we have tried to estimate the status of nitric oxide generation and here we can see that uh, in case of ketosan nanoparticle treatment, nitric oxide generation was significantly induced like that of the nitric oxide donor treatment and this nitric oxide generation was compromised in case of nitric oxide synthesis inhibitor and the combination of elicitor and nitric oxide synthesis inhibitor. And the biochemical basis of nitric oxide generation was further validated by using real-time nitric oxide generation. And here you, you can see that in case of both ketosan nanoparticle and sodium nitroprusside, the potent nitric oxide donor treatment, the nitric oxide generation was elevated. Uh, and in case of the inhibitor treatment or the combination with the ketosan and the inhibitor treatment the nitric oxide generation was compromised different other defense related enzymes such as the phenylalanine ammonia lyase or the peroxidase or the polyphenol oxidase in every cases we found that both the nitric oxide donor treatment and the elicitor donor treatment and the elicitor treatment significantly upregulated the activities of def these defense related enzymes and similarly the like that of the previous results the nitric oxide inhibitor or the combinational treatment reduce the activities and two important secondary metabolites such as total phenol and total flavonoid we are all well known about the antimicrobial potential of these two molecules here we can also see that the ketosan nanoparticle treatment showed 2.15 fold increase wind up. hello wind up complete in one minute yes yes ma'am all right ketosan nanoparticle treatment showed 2.15 fold increased accumulation of the total phenolics over the control sets and almost 1.3 fold higher accumulation of total flavonoid was observed in ketosan nanoparticle treated sets over the control and the important stress marker such as the free proline content was also checked and here you can see that increased accumulation of free proline content denotes the stress condition inside the host plant the previous biochemical data was further validated by looking at the expression profile of different defense related enzymes and the PR proteins here you can see that in every cases ketosan nanoparticle treatment and the nitric oxide donor treatment induced or elevated the expression of this defense related uh, gene and whereas the nitric oxide inhibitor treatment reduce the activity or the reduce the expression of this gene and this is the whole story at a glance elicited ketosan nanoparticle treatment on the plants are mimic of the pathogen action improved nitric oxide generation and finally the improved plant innate immunity lastly i would like to conclude that ketosan nanoparticle treatment can be used as the alternative for the development of sustainable agriculture and finally we can say that 
the prevention is better than cure because we can apply ketosan before the disease period to keep our plants and induce innate immunity. Thank you. Thank you. Next is my presenter is Ria Johnson, Department of Botany, University of Calicut, Kerala. Ria Johnson, are you there? Uh, yes, ma'am. Ah, start your presentation, please. Uh, is it visible, ma'am? Yeah, it's visible. Okay. Okay, uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, myself, Ria Johnson. I am from the Plant Physiology and Biochemistry Division. My uh, work is related to long-term exposure of high light, which imparts a detrimental effect on the antioxidant machinery of Vignangi glata, which is an unreleased variety. So moving on to my introduction, as we know, light is an essential ingredient for the plant survival. And when it comes to high light stress, which is whenever the absorbed light energy surpasses the rate of photochemical reaction, that causes a photo inhibition. And that photo inhibition somehow causes the high light stress. And this photo inhibition results in membrane destruction, structural damage to the chloroplast and other organelles, and a reduction in photosynthetic activity. Now, this reduces the harmful effect of the excess energy by dissipating as heat or fluorescence and not transferring the stain to the reaction center. Now, next is how this highlight stress causes a major effect in the case of the selected cowpea. And why we have selected cowpea is because it's an important legume. It has been called as poor man's meat because it is rich in protein. And moving on to our objective is we are mainly involved in investigating the role of ROS production, then membrane damage, photosynthetic efficiency, and the antioxidant activity. So uh, moving on to the materials and method, we have the plant material that is Vigna Angiculata, and the seeds are being uh, collected from RARS Patambi. And when it belongs to the, its class, it's Dicotyledonae, order Fabales, family Fabaceae, subfamily Faboidae, and then genus Swigna and species Angiculata. The growth condition, the seeds of uniform size were selected. They were surface sterilized by detergent, washed with mercury chloride, and then again washed with distilled water. And then there are seedlings. They were raised in a culture bottle containing adsorbent cotton soaked with hogland medium. So it is a condition where we have given the highlight treatment. And here the bottle is containing the seedling, which is of 10-day-old seedling. And then they were exposed to highlight of intensity 2,000 micromole. And uh, for 2, 4, 6, and 8 hour, provided by the 1,000 volt power 64 metal halide lamp. And the light intensity at the surface level of the leaves were measured by using solar radiation monitor. And all the analysis were done in 8-day-old seedling, 10-day-old se seedling, which is exposed to highlight treatment. Now, moving on to the result, first we have reactive oxygen species, that is uh, also causes damage, indicator of damage. First is superoxide, as moving on to the right side of the graph, we can see that is different colors, we have indicated the different, uh, our treatment, that is 2, 4, 6, and 8, and the highest accumulation can be seen in the case of 8th hour, where the superoxide accumulated. Hello? Hello? Is it not audible? No, no, you are audible now. You are audible. Please, so, please carry on. Please carry on. So it's the eighth hour again. It's the uh, superoxide in the eighth hour, which has highest accumulation, which is around sixty-four percent as compared to that of control. But initially, it seems a linear increase. Then moving on to the next, we have hydrogen peroxide. It's also an reactive oxygen species, which is an indicator of membrane damage. And it's an accumulation where the eighth hour caused the highest accumulation of 70% as compared to that of control. But all other treatments shows a normal linear trip. The next is membrane damage, which has been analyzed by using the MDA, mal malonaldialdehyde. And you can see there is a linear trend of increase, and the highest range was observed in the case of eighth hour. 
Next, we have photosynthetic pigment analysis by using a non method of total chlorophyll and ca carotenoid content. The first one we have chlorophyll, and we have seen that the chlorophyll content was initially there shows a positive effect up to that of six hour with eight percentage of increase. But in the case of eight hour, we have a decrease of twenty one percentage, and this high reduction in chlorophyll was observed only in the case of eight hour of high light exposure. And in the case of carotenoid content, initially it was increasing, and then again the same trend was observed, which has the eight hour, which shows a decrease in the content of carotenoid content. And as we know that carotenoids only not only play a role in the case of light harvesting pigment, but also they protect the photosynthetic system against reactive oxygen species. Next, we have analyzed the non-enzymatic activity, and the non-enzymatic an activity was analyzed by using assays such as ascorbic, glutathione, and phenolics. So, from the graph itself, we can visualize that in the case of glutathione, the eight, which has been indicated or uh, visualized by the yellow color, it seems that. The steep decrease in the case, whereas in the case of ascorbate and phenolics, it seems to see increase. That is a trend of linear increase. And again, in the case of enzymatic activity, as sodium and cat, that is superoxide dismutase and cat, they shows a decrease, which, which has been indicated by the yellow color. Whereas the ascorbate peroxidase and the GPX activity of the eight tower till eight tower, they shows linear increase. So from the above, we know that this highlight stress led to a pronounced decrease in the activity of superoxide dismutase, catalase, and glutathione, then uh, the antioxidants. But they led to a negligible increase in the case of peroxidase in that. And according to Prior et al., the decrease in the sodium cat activity results from the photosynthetic electron transport impairment. And the increased activity of the ascorbate peroxidase and the glycol peroxidase they somehow detoxify the hydrogen peroxide in the water into water. Now moving on to the summary and the conclusion, the supraoptimal light condition, which is the eighth hour, they has a devastating effect on the cowpea growth and metabolism, including the photosynthesis. And in the present study, it reveals that the chlorophyll syn synthesis was sensitive only in the case of eighth hour, which is similar, which uh, and a similar trend has been observed in the case of carotenoid too. And this decreased photosynthetic activity is mainly because of, it can be correlated with a decrease in the case of photosystem and also a case in the case of this PS1 and PS2 activity and a damaged photosynthetic protein. And next we have that ROS accumulation. Increased ROS accumulation has been observed in the case of... Yeah, time is over now. Okay, ma'am, it's just about to finish. One more slide. And this increased ROS accumulation somehow represents the increased activity of SOD and CAT. But the decrease in the activity of SOD and CAT as well as decrease in glutathione content, it could be attributed to increased destruction of the... SH containing enzymes which are generated by the ROS. Now the last, the conclusion is that even though the ascorbate and the phenolics and peroxidase activity was enhanced, but the lack of concerted action of all the complete antioxidant machinery was successful for detoxification of the ROS, which was not ST. And from the above, it can be concluded that highlight stress affect photosynthetic efficiency negatively above a critical period, but they manifest a positive effect on exposure to short periods. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Ria. Next speaker um, presenter is Asha Rani, Department of Botany, Bareilly College, Bareilly. Yes, ma'am. Are you there? Ria, mute your uh, mic. Oh. Uh, Dr. Asha Rani, Department of Botany, Are you there, ma'am? E.J. Joe Kutti, Department of Botany, Brennan College, Thalassery, Kannur. Are you there? Are you there? E.J. Joe Kutti. Okay. Yusuf S. The School of Business Studies. Shada University, Noida. Are you there? Ritu Sharma, Department of Biosciences. Imagine yes, University. Yes, okay, ma'am. I am there. Ha. Start your presentation, please. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Wait, wait for a moment. Uh, 
Uh, Ma'am, uh, is my slide uh, visible? Is my presentation visible? Yes, it's starting now. Yes. Okay. Thank, you. Well, th uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Um, good afternoon, one and all. Um, I am uh, presenting my paper uh, on the topic uh, traditional and indigenous practices of some medicinal plants as immunity boosters by folklore of Mandi district, Himachal Pradesh. Uh, see, uh, the main uh, emphasis in this paper uh, is basically on the plants which are used by folklore to improve their immunity and to cure immunity related diseases like cough, cold and allergies. Uh, the uh, main focus was on the rural communities of Mandi district. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this is uh, some beautiful landscapes uh, showing the uh, biodiversity of the uh, district and uh, these are some beautiful uh, water lakes uh, natural water lakes of uh, mandi uh, which are quite uh, sacred and famous as well uh, this is uh, uh, just a collage to show you uh, the lifestyle and how the plants they are deep rooted uh, with the life of the people in the district uh, so uh, this is something about the previous botanical like explore although uh, work has been done but uh, till today a uh, special emphasis on cough cold and uh, uh, allergies is not uh, emphasized yet uh, so uh, this I'm just coming to the results and discussions and I am starting from the high altitude plant to the low altitude plant so I am starting with the Achillea millefolium also known as Gandhana so uh, let me tell you one thing here that in uh, hilly areas all the uh, all the in kind of infusions or the decoctions they are commonly called as Kadha uh, even if you are taking a tea uh, infused with some herbs you will also call this Kadha only so uh, the infusion made of it the flowers and the young leaf of this plant is very popular to cure cough, cold and fever in the high altitudes of Pandi district. Uh, next one is Taxus valichiana, a highly sacred plant, highly endangered plant, uh, quite famous uh, uh, for its uh, taxol uh, constituent, anti-cancerous consti constituent. But here, I would like to tell you that the people consume the detoxion, decoction of the leaves, especially during winters, to keep themselves away from cough and cold. Uh, another pic is depicting uh, a traditional ritual which is being conducted on the Shivratri, and this is known as the Chandoe there. So you can see the people, they worship this plant in, on the Shivratri as well. Uh, next one is Voila canescens, one of the most trusted remedy for cough and cold since ages and uh, the decoction is useful for the infants as well. Uh, so uh, they basically it is orally taken with honey and tulsi. Uh, the next one is your Tinospora sinensis. During this COVID pandemic, when I had uh, uh, interacted few people uh, regarding, okay, how are you uh, keeping yourself safe from this thing? So the best answer was the Tinospora sinensis. Uh, uh, stems decoction so what uh, what how the people use it in uh, hilly areas they cut it into small pieces boil it in water and they consume it empty stomach and uh, this practice is being used by the folklore since ages and these days many people they boil the stem along with milk as well and it is considered one of the best immunity boosters uh, next one is osimum kilimandescarium baramasi tulsi most of the people in the hilly areas they they prefer the tea made of these leaves of this very plant as it is available for the uh, whole year. So obviously due to availability, it is considered a good plant. The next one is your Piper Longum. Uh, Magha uh, is the uh, vernacular name in Mandi. Uh, so the powder, this is one of the best uh, plants as anti-allergic. The people, they uh, make the powder of its fruit and uh, they consume it along with the misri to to relief from the arctic area any kind of arctic area they claim it can be treated with the help of this piper longum the next one is osimum sanctum one of the most cherished healing herb and most sacred um, herb you can see in the pic that uh, this is how the people they worship they uh, this is how they consider it so sacred and decoction of leaves is 
taken along with honey and pipli that is the piper longum uh, to cure the hoarseness of the hoarseness of the throat and cough uh, the next one is morus alba during summer this plant in the hills is the most cherished one for the immunity boosting so uh, the children they consume it so happily the next one is curcuma longa the the more i will say about it plant it will be definitely less so the rhizome powder is taken along with the milk before bed time to enhance the immunity and it is a very good anti allergic and wound healer as well so the uh, next one is phyllanthus ambelica uh, there is a tradition in mandi uh, regarding uh, this plant that is amla ki khichdi is a very popular ritual of valley basically in mandi we believe uh, that uh, the the when the climate changes like when the season changes the allergic problems are at its peak so uh, during uh, the when the winters are about to come this plant the fruit its consumption is important and uh, it is the part of the ritual of the district so analysis uh, says that uh, uh, 28% uh, uh, part is utilized is the leaf followed by uh, root and uh, 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 flower and the habit 33% uh, are trees and the shrubs as well so uh, hi, here i would like to say that the wild medicinal plants are basically the major players of the pharma industry uh, because they are safe to use and they are basically economic treatment of line and the source of income okay, okay ma'am yes yes ma'am so here is just a, a slide showing you how the global market is uh, marketing these very much plants in the various forms you can see and the recent one you can see here is the ayush kudinir uh, which is approved by government of india and i i must tell you that the in ingredients are one are most of them which i just presented in my slide so what's the message just novel drug discovery and novel drug delivery system is the next step for such kind of uh, medicinal plants see we need to uh, we need to document them at any cost because they are the only path to show us the delivery the next uh, drug delivery uh, system uh, so thank you all uh, thank you ritu Uh, stop sharing your slides and mute yes. your mic okay uh, thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you uh dr aisha rani from department of botany bareilly college bareilly is ready to for her presentation uh so present it now ma'am dr aisha rani dr aisha rani ma'am are you there Otherwise, call Doctor Yusuf. He is also ready. He just messaged me. Okay. Uh, Doctor Yusuf, School of Business Studies, S. B. Adam, uh, Sharda University, Noida, UP. Hello, Doctor Yusuf. Are you there? Yes, Doctor Yusuf. Are you there? please unmute your mic yes start your presentation no. sir dr yusuf has muted himself somehow i don't know uh, he just his mic is on now but uh, he is not uh... but then we can, we can move ahead ma'am okay Dr. Sanjeev Kumar Gupta, Department of Botany, Government Degree College, Bilawar, Jammu and Kashmir. Sir, you uh -huh. want to do this presentation? Yes, sir. You have some technical issues, sir. Your uh, uh, voice is cracking a lot. Please try to solve it. doctor yes sanjeev gupta sir is presenting now doctor sanjeev gupta are you presenting yes 
So the common okay. misconception is it's an additional plant used by Gujarat tribe. It surely kills a monster to the point of Jammu and Kashmir. It is. Ma'am, ma'am, I am Yusuf sir. Sir, are you now audible? Okay, yes, Yusuf sir. Okay, uh, okay. Can you share your presentation? Okay. Can I share my screen? Yes, share please. Okay. Sanjeev Gupta sir, please stop sharing. Is it visible? Yes, it's visible. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Yusuf Sarsani. I'm here to present uh, a research paper titled Economic Growth and Environmental Degradation in Developing World Evidence from Nigeria, which covers a period of 1981 to 2019. This is the uh, presentation outline. I will start by introduction. I will just be skipping to the uh, very uh, important points because of the time factor. In developing countries, uh, pollution has been in existence over a long period of time, and much effort has been put in place to study its relationship with the economic growth of with the growth of various cities in the world. The industrial revolution and its technological advancement and the attempts and the attempt by multinational corporations to exploit the economy coupled with urbanization have further been combining issues, degrading the environment even more. So for this study, Nigeria will be used as case study to examine how industrial activities and energy consumption affect the environment. Therefore, this study seeks to determine the relationship between economic growth and the environmental degradation in Nigeria. Specifically, the study has the following objectives to, get, to examine the effect of energy consumption on the environmental quality and to analyze the effect of industrialization on the environmental quality and to examine the relationship between economic growth and environmental quality in Nigeria. So I've reviewed various uh, empirical studies. Uh, so the methodology uh, we adopt uh, in these studies, quantitative technique, and secondary data were collected on carbon emission, real GDP industrialization, and energy consumption. Regression analysis was used uh, using regressive uh, distributed lab model. And economic views was published as a this is the worst carbon emission 
as a function of real GDP industrialization and uh, energy, energy consumption. So uh, the economic model is as follows uh, carbon emission as a function of real GDP industrialization, energy consumption, and the first lag value of the dependent variable, which is uh, carbon emission. So the result uh, uh, is as follows. I'll just go directly to the result. The coefficient of the uh, first lag value of the dependent variable, it, uh, which, which measure the speed of adjustment, which method the speed of adjustment, short line equilibrium, by 5.909%. And it's statistically significant in determining the dependent variable. So the, uh, we, we also found that the real GDP adheres to the positive, which implies a positive relationship uh, with the dependent variable, but is statistically insignificant, while industrialization uh, is, has negative relationship with the dependent variable or inverse relationship, and it is also statistically insignificant. Uh, statistically insignificant. The energy consumption found to be positive, and it is the only variable that is statistically significant in determining the independent variable. So we have a various discussion of holistic education. Economic growth was found to have a positive relationship with the environmental degradation, uh, as we have uh, gone through from the result, which uh, means that uh, Income is not the determinant of environmental behavior. Probably because the income is highly skewed in favor of few in developing countries. While the industrialization was found to have a negative or inverse relationship with the environmental degradation during the period covered by this study, but this study is also statistically insignificant. By implication, as uh, the industrialization it is the environment degrading more in Nigeria, but it's statistically insignificant. Why? Because from 1980s onwards, uh, the rate of industrialization has been decreasing. So, probably that is the reason why uh, industrialization is insignificant in determining the independent variable. Dr. Yusuf, conclude it one, in one minute. Okay, ma. Okay, ma. I'll just go directly to the conclusion. This research confirms that uh, environmental degradation has positive relationship with economic growth in Nigeria, while industrialization was found in a negative relationship. The energy consumption is the only variable that is found to be significant in determining uh, environmental degradation. Therefore, it can be concluded that the rate of uh, economic growth. Uh, and the rate at which energy is being consumed is spread over uh, the period covered by this study have a positive relationship with the environmental relationship in Nigeria. However, the rate of the study is negatively related. Time over. Dr. Dr. Preeti, time over, please. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Stop sharing your slides and okay, unmute, ma. please. Okay. Next is Munabbar Fazal, Dr. Munabbar Fazal, Department of Botany, College of Commerce, Arts and Science, Patna, Bihar. Then please provide me feedback link, ma'am. Dr. Munabbar, are, uh, are you here? Dr. Munabbar. Next is B. Priyadarshini, Department of Botany, Annamalai University. Dr. Preeti, don't wait for anyone. If he ah. or she is not present, then call another uh, speaker. I am calling the next one. Uh, Dr. B. Priyadarshini, Department of Botany, Annamalai University, Annamalai Nagar, Tamil Nadu. Are you there? Dr. B. Priyadarshini. Next is Dr. Shail Bajpai, Department of Zoology, SNC in BBPG College. 
ma'am are you there dr shail bajpayee yes ma'am yes priti i am present yes please present am i audible yes you are clearly audible yeah. please show your slides now good afternoon everyone in e conference share your slides please yes yeah, yes 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 is still sharing it uh is my slide visible is my slide visible no slides are not visible now okay i am trying Yes, Priti. Yes. My yes. slide is visible. Yes, they are visible now. Okay, okay. My presentation is a topic: plant origin pesticides, bio pesticides, evolution of gingiver of Snellis against this dark as coining in favor. Types of uh, types of insects. First, beneficial insects. For example, Bombyx mori and Caria lecca. and harmful insects these are called pests pests are a big challenge for the farmers to overcome slide in field of agriculture pests are big challenge for the farmers to overcome this darkus koenigi is a serious pest of cotton crop it is commonly called red cotton bug it belongs to family pyrocoridae Order Hemiptera or Phylum Arthropoda. More than 300 species are distributed worldwide, mainly India and America. Adult insect is crimson with a pair of black spot on the fore wings. The membranous hind wings are concealed under the fore wings when the insect is at rest. male insects are about 14 mm in length whereas female insects are little bigger in size nymph molds five times as they grow first and second in star nymph are orange and red in color third in star nymph are emerging wing pads and orange at first and depending in colors by the second day fourth in star nymph is crimson and cylindrical with larger darker wing pad fifth in star nymph is similar with prominent dark wing pad black antennae and legs in gestation nymph and adult of this darkus koenigi feeds on emerging balls of cotton and cotton seeds as they mature red cotton bug has become a major threat to transgenic cotton as it causes warts on internal carpel walls of cotton balls severe lint staining lint locks and lint lesions pest management botanical pesticides are plant natural products that belongs to the group of so called secondary metabolites which includes thousand of alkaloids terpenoids phenolics and minor secondary chemicals these substances have no known function in photosynthesis growth or other basic aspects of plant physiology however their biological activity with insects nematodes 
and phytopathogenic fungi, among other organisms, is quite significant. The discovery rate of new insecticides from synthetic sources has declined in recent years. Furthermore, synthetic insecticides that share a neurotoxic mode of action can lead to the development of cross resistance in plants. Ma'am, also, the farmers use karte hai, ye synthetic uh, uh, chemicals. Pesticides के रूप में तो handling में बहुत problem होती है और उनके हाथों में skin infection हो जाता है। एक ये भी major cause Ma'am, it's over now. Time is over. Please. Okay. Conclude. Botanical... Please conclude. Okay, okay, sir. Many botanicals. Many sir. Ginger of this is a flowering plant. Ginger is family ginger. Ginger is also includes turmeric and cardamoms. And my experiments were conducted. 0.51 and 2 percentage of three replications and three treatments, six hours, 12 hours, and 24 hours. So findings are in tables, computations, and results. So mean model the analysis shows that with the increase of period and concentrations of the acetone extract, the mortality rate of third star mean of D energy also increases. Means the extract of ginger officinalis gave appreciated results for controlling the limbs of the quinine. Okay, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the you next presentation is by Dr. Romana the Department of Zoology, Government Girls PG, uh, sorry, Government PG College, Kishtawar, Jammu and Kashmir. Shall I? Yeah. 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 Some network issue, I think some network issue is there. Voice is not so clear. Ramana, uh, ma'am, your voice is cracking, please. Hello? Ah, yes. Yes, yes. Ramana, ma'am, start now. Adarsh sir, what to do? Romana ma'am. Romana ma'am ka network dhoka de gaya mujhe lagta hai. Chaliye next speaker bulaiye aap. Ab tak Romana aa jayegi network pe. Yes. Next presenter is Dr. V. Kavita, Department of Botany. Uh, Raya Sigma University, Kurnool, Andhra Pradesh, India. Dr. B. Kavita, ma'am, are you there? Dr. B. Kavita. Dr. Next, Vivek. Next. next, Dr. Vivek Kumar. MLSM College, Sundar Nagar, Mandi. Ah, hello? Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, yes. hello? Yes, sir. Please start your presentation. Hello? Yes, Dr. Vivek Kumar, sir. You are hello. audible. You are hello. audible. Hello? Yes, sir. You are audible. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, Pandit, sir, am I audible? Hello? Yes, sir, you are audible. Hello? Um, Dr. Vivek Kumar, sir, you are audible. Uh, 
अम्मीम कर लिया उन्होंने yes he left the meeting and uh, i think sh- he is going to join again uh, then we should take our next participant uh dr neha kapoor department of biotechnology school of yes. applied sciences jaipur yes, right ma'am i'm here yes dr neha kapoor please start your presentation thank you so much ma'am uh i'm sharing my screen okay the slides are visible no slides are not visible okay just a moment yes they are visible now yes you can start good afternoon morning one and hour this side dr neha kapoor उटनलिट or inside the internal tissues of the plant without showing any obvious symptom of their existence now the next point is why these endophytes need to be explored these endophytes need to be explored because india is among the largest biodiversity regions of the globe and it is the second most diverse group of living organism is fungi all over the world all over the world and approximately 3 lakh plant species exist on the earth and it is expected that each plant hold at least 1 to 4 endophytes so with approximately 1 million endophytes or more than that that are currently existing in the world they are still uh, considered as under explored for various therapeutic applications the uh, the these endophytes came into the limelight after the uh, uh, billion dollar drug Exol from an endophytic fungi, Textomyces ingredi, that was isolated from the bark of Texas Bevisolia, and then afterwards there are many more fungal endophytes that has been isolated from uh, many medicinal plants, and they are being explored for their therapeutic potential in many aspects. Another interesting fungal endophyte is Muscular albus that has been isolated from the bark of Cinnamum thalanicum, that is Dalcini. It was discovered in the year 2001 by an eminent scientist Gary Strobel sir and there are many uh, many more fungal endophytes that are being explored for many purposes like for anti cancer drugs like for antioxidant activity or immunosuppression or cardiovascular disorders so keeping these things in mind we have explored endophytes for to solve to curbing the inflammation and uh, to uh, discover a drug that can uh, actually act as an anti cancer molecule so next is inflammation inflammation basically is a type of multiple diseases as you can see it is responsible for causing type 2 diabetes cardiovascular disorders cancer immune disorders rheumatoid arthritis parkinson's disease alzheimer's disease and being on that we have selected one uh, enzyme that is asparaginase that enzyme is basically this uh, you being used for some inflammatory purposes inflammatory purposes and to being used uh, to be being exploited as an anti cancer drug so keeping this thing in mind we have explored we have selected few plants for the isolation of few fungal endophytes and then to explore them for various bioactive molecules so this is the hypothesis basically the current study in which we have uh, selected few uh, medicinal plants from the high altitude region of uttarakhand which includes pinus perniana cinnamon tamala cinnamon varum osmum tanuliforum rhododendron arborium and we have isolated few fungal endophytes from that and then we have explored them for multiple uh, activities so this is complete overview of the work these are the plants that are that has been selected from where we have isolated few fungal endophytes we have Uh, subjected them for the submerged fermentation, from which we got some bank of bioactive compounds, and then we have screened that fermentation broth for some lipase inhibitory and anti-inflammatory, anti-microbial actions. And from there, we have uh, by using the liquid-liquid extraction, we have uh, 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 we obtain some uh, crude extracts 
which we subjected them for screening of L asparaginase production. And the potent endocytes were isolated by morpho morpho taxonomy as well as molecular taxonomy. Then we have isolated and characterized the L asparaginase enzymes by using partial purification, and in vivo evaluation is done. These are some fungal endocytes that we have isolated, which includes Lepidopleura pseudotheobromae, Hypozelon species, unidentified Fusidium exisporum, Muscular species, and there are many more which whose pictures are not shown here, but they are in our repository. Then we have screened them for multiple biological activities, for example, proteolytic activities. This figure two is showing some proteolytic activity of these culture filtrates of fungal endocytes. These are the uh, figure five is showing amylolytic activity of culture filtrate to fungal endocytes. Then figure three is showing L asparaginase activity. It is a phenol red asparagine plate in which the pink color yellow is the Then there, this is one. This is the one. Microbial action, and this picture is. Then screening for porcine pancreatic lipase inhibitor. Then uh, we all the lipase for lipase inhibitor. Basically, the endocrine inhibit the enzyme lipase can be used for an anti-obesity drug or not. So maximum lipase inhibitor was observed in few articles. That was has to be taken seven thousand per specimen to determine. As you can see from here, the, uh, the smaller the size of the hello formed on the plate, the more potent is the uh, fungal endo. Ah, uh, Neha ma'am, conclude it. Okay, I am just concluding it. So uh, these fungal endo endopites have been further identified by uh, morpho taxonomy as well as by molecular taxonomy. So these are few publications from that. Then L S pyrimidine production, we have uh, screened them for in two phases, primary and secondary, from which the most potent endophytic fungal isolate then was for the partial purification and uh, the activity was found to be five times, five fold it was. Then anti-inflammatory activities uh, of these three lines were assessed by albumin denaturation assay, in which the the uh, potent endophyte which was Showing from the uh, results in previous experiment uh, was in the potent anti-inflammatory of 34 percent. And conclusion: in all 29 different fungal endocytes were isolated from all these six plants. Among that isolate, six isolates were positive in inhibiting lipase as well as L asparaginase transferases, of which 25 and 22 gradient I was the potent one. And further, more purification of these bioactive compounds and these seed compounds are underway. We are doing work on that. Thank you so much for your. Okay, thank you, Neha Kapoor, ma'am. Okay. Uh, anyone who are in the list want to? Ma'am, can you give all, all once more, uh, uh, Miss uh, Miss Romana, Miss Romana? Okay. Uh, Mrs. Romana, can you hear me? Would you like to speak Dr. again? Doctor Romana, are you there? Doctor, आप नहीं को हो रहा है आपके दोनों माइक खुले हुए हैं सर। हमारे? जी 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 आपके दोनों माइक खुले हुए हैं। यार हमारे एक माइक दोबारा। बंदी सेंड की फीडबैक लेके मैम। We are just waiting from last three hours, ma'am. Yes, Doctor Romana is presenting now. Please, ma'am. Read chat box. Read chat box. Please, please. Hello. 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 Yes, Romana. Yes. Your voice quality is very low. Please. uh try to solve it why is it lagging dear doctor romana you are not audible at all please switch off your camera okay leave it Okay, okay, leave, leave, leave it, it uh, and, and now, now call, call, now call, Doctor 
uh, Kavya for the, the result. Before, Before that, that, till he, he she is preparing the result. I would like to uh, call Dr. Atul Prati that uh, kindly declare, declare two awards for which we have received many applications. One, One is a research excellence award and another is academic excellence award. Yes, sir. So I can, will you please allow me to uh, declare the awards? Sir, sir as, a, as, as president of SRB, as you must declare the award. And it is our great pleasure that we are uh, having these two awardees with us today. I don't want to disclose their name, but you please carry on, sir. OK, OK, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Do we have with us uh, are the first member of SRBS, the most intelligent, the international person, Dr. Rajender Singh with us? Yes, Dr. Sahib, available. Thank you so much. Ah, sir, you it's are wrong. awarded as... Namaskar, sir. Namaskar, Namaskar. And you are awarded as the Research Excellence Award 2020 for SRBS. Many congratulations to you, sir. Yes, I am trying to present the certificate and uh, wait for the certificate. Can you see this certificate now? No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Congratulations, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Many, many congratulations. कलाकार में आपका नाम भी प्रेजेंट कीजिएगा। हाँ? थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर साहब कुछ दो लाइनें कह दूँ कुछ? अरे सर मोस्ट वेलकम सर दिस इज़ फॉर विच आई एम ट्राइंग टू आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग टू से समथिंग एसआरबीएस एंड दिस कॉन्फ़िडेंस थैंक यू सो प्लीज कोशिश करिए कि मैं टाइम से बना रहूँ other team members. Uh, regarding this achievement award, I am thankful to Honorable Jury and the uh, governing body of SRBS, especially my dear friend Dr. Adas Pandeji and Dr. Ramesh Chandraji to consider me for such a prestigious award. I am grateful to the dear members of SRBS. I dedicate this achievement to my respected teacher, mentors, and friends and family. Thank you so much, all in all, for your love and affection. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, now another award goes to the Academic Excellence Award. The Academic Excellence Award goes to Dr. Manoj Chand Kanpal, Director, JPM PG College, Bareilly. Dr. Saab, many congratulations. If you are here, then Academic Excellence Award. Can you all see the certificates? Certificate of uh, Academic Excellence? Not yet, sir. You are presenting. Uh, idea? No, sir. Sir, आपकी स्क्रीन दिखाई दे रही है. Certificate पहले आप on कर लीजिए पहले. Certificate on कर लिया यार मैंने. पता नहीं क्यों नहीं दिखा रहा. Sir, multiple screen आ गया. आप अपना screen present कर रहे हैं सर अभी certificate. नदीम खास आप के लिए मेरा एक मैसेज है कि जब आप किसी कॉन्फ्रेंस को अटेंड कर रहे होते हैं तो मेरे खास से लास्ट मोमेंट तक आपको वेट करना पड़ता है फॉर द लिंक फॉर द सर्टिफिकेट नदीम खान को कुछ ज़्यादा जल्दी आपको इनोग्रल में इनोग्रल में नहीं मिलता है ब्लेड पे मिलते हैं सर्टिफिकेट थैंक यू स
Yes, sir. It's visible now. Very nice. Oh, Shandar, what about the hair? पर अपना आशीर्वाद बनाए रखिए डॉक्टर राजेंद्र सिंह सर डॉक्टर मनोज चंद कांडपाल साहब हम लोग बड़े गरीब लोग हैं आपका सहयोग मिल जाता है तो हमारी हिम्मत बढ़ जाती है अब नाउ इट ओवर हिंदुस्तान की सारी जनता आपके आपके जैसी गरीब हो जाए डॉक्टर साहब डॉक्टर प्रीति नो कॉल डॉक्टर साहब भी बहुत धन्यवाद ओके ओके थैंक यू सर नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू कॉल डॉक्टर काव्या um who is the member of our jury who will tell about the uh, presentations presented by our uh, participants uh, so welcome kavya ma'am please please say few words uh, thank you to pidu thank you so much please put your Yes, Kavya ma'am. Hello, Dr. Kavya. Adarsh sir. Adarsh sir. Adarsh sir. Priti ma'am, मेरे ख्याल से Priti ma'am, मेरे ख्याल से काव्या जी connected नहीं हो पा रही हैं। तो Priti जी sir. Yes sir, yes sir. मैं request करूँगी। राजेंद्र सर शुरू से ही थे हम लोगों के साथ क्यों ना हम लोग को ही आज जूरी में इंक्लूड कर दें और सर कुछ बताइए इस प्रेजेंटेशन के बारे में काव्या मैम बोल रही हैं आप लोग सुनने की कोशिश कीजिए जी 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 आवाज नहीं आ रही है आपकी आवाज बहुत स्लो आ रही है बहुत स्लो सुनाई नहीं दे रहा काव्य मैडम किसी को सुनाई नहीं दे रहा है सॉरी चलिए मैं पढ़ देता हूँ आपका रिजल्ट मैं ही बता देता हूँ सबको ठीक है चलिए ठीक है हाँ डॉक्टर काव्या की आवाज नहीं दे रही है तो मैं उनका मैसेज पढ़ देता हूँ यस सर ठीक है सर यस सर यस सर गोड सर Hello. Okay, Dr. Hakarthi gave a wonderful presentation as keynote talk. Though all the presentations were excellent, but to keep the tradition, we agreed to have first among equals as Dr. Anjana Bhatia. And although there was a technical glitch with Dr. Rina, but she presented equally well. And she is second. Dr. Ahlawat presented on COVID, which is very contemporary, and she is third. I again would say that my number result is just customary, and science is always inspiring for the best. I wish all the participants a heartiest congratulations and best of luck for future. My special congratulations to Dr. Akriti as a very young scientist. She gave a lovely presentation, and here are the results. So the result is going to be declared now. The 
थर्ड बेस्ट पेपर थर्ड अवार्ड गोज टू मिस्टर यूसुफ एस साद फ्रॉम नोएडा मिस्टर यूसुफ एस साद मिस्टर यूसुफ एस साद हेलो मिस्टर यूसुफ मिस्टर यूसुफ कैन यू वेयर मी यू गॉट द थर्ड बेस्ट पेपर अवार्ड मेनी कंग्रेचुलेट many congratulations thank would you like you, to sir. speak a, 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 a line thank you sir thank you thank you thank you thank you good sir And thank you please 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 uh, mute your mic okay sir thank you okay and the second the best paper second prize according to our jury goes to dr neha kapoor from jaipur rajasthan dr neha Many congratulations you. to you. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Would you, would you like to speak something? Uh, thank you so much, sir, for organizing such a wonderful international e conference. I am also attending your other conferences also, and it was a very nice experience and very nice presentations presented by all the speakers as well as keynote speakers. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity. Thank, thank you. you, thank you so much, thank you so much, and we are not biased at all. Okay. Yeah. Dr. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, has prepared the result very carefully. You know, she is from IIT and she is very well. She is a very good scientist. So many congratulations. Keep in touch. We would be presenting more and more conferences like that. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And now, sit here, dil tham ke. First prize goes to any guesses, Dr. Atul Prati. No guesses. No guesses. It was a very tough job. All the presentations were so well. So I am. Dr. Preeti Singh, can you guess? <laughs> no, sir. No. No, no. no okay, okay. The first prize, the best paper, first goes to Ritu Sharma from Himachal Pradesh. Oh, Ritu. thank you, thank you so much. Ritu, are you there? Thank you. Yes, sir. I am there. I am there. I am there. हिंदी में बोलो जो जी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सर बहुत बहुत दिल से तहे दिल से शुक्रिया प्रीति मैम बहुत ही बहुत बहुत बिग बिग थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच आप आप तीनों आपको क्या लगता है कि हम लोगों ने रिजल्ट तैयार करने में किसी प्रकार की कोई प्रॉम्प्टिंग तो नहीं की ना नहीं नहीं सर नहीं नहीं बिल्कुल भी नहीं आप अब मैं तो नंबर वन पर आई हूँ तो मैं तो ऐसा ही कहूंगी कि बहुत ही अच्छा रिजल्ट है बट नहीं थैंक यू सो मच डिस्पाइट ऑफ द दिस जोक मैं एक बात कहना चाहूंगी आदर्श सर ये जो टेक्निकल ही चीज रहते हैं ये एक तरफ है लेकिन एक कॉन्फ्रेंस में मतलब आप समझिए कि पूरा वर्ल्ड कनेक्ट हो रहा है आज मतलब यूएस से लेकर के कश्मीर से लेकर तो केरला तक हम सब कनेक्टेड हैं तो आ, सर ये बहुत ही अच्छा सा एक्सपीरियंस मुझे जो है वो पर्सनली लगा कि आप ऑल इंडिया में देख रहे हैं कि क्या रिसर्च परस्पेक्टिव चल रहे हैं हम कहाँ स्टैंड करते हैं या आगे फर्दर स्कोप क्या है तो आप ऐसे काइंडली जब भी ऑर्गेनाइज करें तो हम सबको लूप में जरूर रखिएगा आई वुड डेफिनेटली वुड Uh, be the part of your each and every conference in future. Wonderful organization and thank you so much, Preeti Ma'am. You are so beautiful and your and everything is really. Thank you. 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 now it's your responsibility to make all the three uh, prize winners make the srp slide members <laughs> all the presenters would be the members ha ye 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 bataiye kab banenge aap log sab live member ritu सर आप आप आज ही बता दीजिए टर्म्स एंड कंडीशंस मैं तो आज ही आपके साथ जुड़ना पसंद करूंगी क्योंकि अभी आप कहिए नहीं बस एक सिंपल सा लिंक शेयर कर दीजिए आपको लिंक शेयर कर दीजिए बिल्कुल बिल्कुल सर मैं 
आपको प्रीति मैम आपको पूरा सिस्टम प्रॉपरली समझा देंगी एंड आई वुड बी हैप्पी टू हैव यू ओके थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू मोस्ट वेलकम एंड सी योर नेम इन टुमारोस न्यूज़पेपर टू ओके ओह ओके थैंक यू सर आज यार टू बी गॉन ऑन फॉर मी मेरे फेवरेट मेरे फेवरेट सीएम जी के गवाह देखते हैं तो बहुत ही अच्छा लगेगा योगी जी तो डॉक्टर काव्या जी प्लीज डॉक्टर काव्या प्लीज आई आई एम सो सॉरी नेटवर्क इज सो बैड टुडे एंड इट इज वन ऑफ दोस एक्सेप्शनल डेज जब सच में नेटवर्क खराब होता है सो आदर्श जी हैव ऑलरेडी डिक्लेयर्ड द रिजल्ट्स एंड आई वुड लाइक टू कंग्रेचुलेट ऑल द विनर्स बट आई वुड लाइक टू आल्सो से वन थिंग कि इट इज जस्ट फर्स्ट अमंग द इक्वल्स हम सब रिसर्च करते हैं हम सब क्लास में पढ़ाते हैं और इसमें कभी भी ना रैट रेस नहीं होती है इसीलिए आज भी शिक्षा देना और शिक्षा देना शायद सबसे पावन माना जाता है सबसे क्लीन बिजनेस सबसे क्लीन प्रोफेशन माना जाता है क्योंकि इसमें अभी भी हम रैट रेस में एंटर नहीं हुए हैं हम इम्प्रोवाइजेशन के लिए बेटरमेंट के टूवर्ड्स जाते हैं जब बिल्कुल यंग रिसर्चर लाइक आकृति श्रीवास्तव ने इतना अच्छा की नोट लेक्चर दिया तो मुझे इतना सिक्योर फील हुआ आदर्श जी की हमारा फ्यूचर सेफ हैंड्स में साइंस का फ्यूचर सेफ हैंड्स में फिर जब मैं डॉक्टर पीपी सिंह को देख रही हूँ फिर जब मैं डॉक्टर नेहा कपूर को देख रही हूँ या फिर डॉक्टर तु शर्मा या यूसुफ जी का प्रेजेंटेशन बन आई एम लिस्निंग सो आई एम फीलिंग दैट मेंटर्स आर आल्सो एक्सेलेंट सो द होल चेन ऑफ मेंटर एंड मेंटी ऑफ साइंस इज जस्ट सो कॉन्क्रीट दैट आपने आज एक फीलिंग को बहुत श्योर दी है कि इंडिया में साइंस हमेशा नंबर वन रहेगी और ये हम ही लोगों का छोटा छोटा सा एफर्ट है जो इन कॉन्फ्रेंसेस के थ्रू एक बहुत बड़ी विंडो ओपन करता है मैं एक दिल से सबका शुक्रिया करती हूँ और आदर्शी आपको बहुत बहुत अप्रिसिएशन ये चीजें आसान नहीं होती हैं जो इसी कोविड ने सिखाई हूँ सबको डिजिटली मंगाया है एंड आपने तो इसमें लीड ही ले ली है सो आई एम अप्रिशिएट अब दिस थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू हेलो हेलो डॉक्टर पति प्लीज जी जी सो थैंक यू ऑल अवर स्पीकर्स एंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू अपोलोजाइज फॉर दिस टेक्निकल एचेस बट दीज आर सम as uh, ma'am says some those exceptional days when we have extremely bad uh, conditions of network and a few of our uh, presenters could not present their uh, their work to us i'm uh, very sorry for that too and now i would like to call upon dr adarsh pande for giving a uh, uh, to uh, speech of thanks dr dr adarsh pande thank you dr atulpati and uh, on behalf, on behalf of, of uh, this college shah jahan janpur government pg college, college uh, Kulpur, and, and society, society, society for research and political science which was established in june, june 2019 myself dr, dr. dr. adarsh pande department dr. dr botany ss jahan on behalf of, of the full organizing committee, committee including the, the organizing secretary dr atulpati including co-organizing secretary dr preeti singh including co-convener and host dr ramesh chandra including uh, the patrons dr chanyal and dr ak mishra sir from ss college and dpgc college bajpur our reporter dr nirupama dala koti i am thankful to everyone who listened carefully vigilantly and beautifully i am thankful to all 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 in all who presented the papers here i am thankful to dr akriti srivastava who is the keynote speaker i am thankful to dr anjana bhatia dr reena dave and dr jyoti helawat for uh, presenting the beautiful lectures i am thankful to each and all i i i am i am thankful to every listener of this international e conference and uh, thank you so much and wait for the next uh, event thank you thank you all bye bye and don't 
uh, forget to to fill the feedback link which is open for 3 pm only thank you thank you so much dr atul thank you is sir thank over? you is it over or it is still remaining something yes sure recording off kar do that's all that's all thank you thank you bye bye yes sure recording off karo sir thank you so much sir and i am thankful to arju